of the Lone Star State at the home of the Panthers at Prairie View a and as we welcome you in to ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. The Prairie View a and players coming in clean, taking off their head coach on the walk into the stadium, waiting on the other side. The Tigers of Jackson State fresh off an overtime win this past weekend with both teams sitting at an even 500 in the swag chasing down unbeaten Southern and all corn state in the West and East respectively as we say hello and welcome you in with the former Howard University and NFL quarterback Jay Walker I'm Tiffany Green give me some quick analysis here on the expectations of this team going into the season and where they are now I think both teams had high expectations and they were for different reasons Jackson State had earned that credibility they thought they were the team that can knock off all corn in the eastern part of the division that hasn't been the case so far but they are coming off of victory last week but it's make or break time for right now for Jackson State Tigers I think Prairie View A&M we knew their offense was good enough to win a championship but they don't quite have the championship caliber defense they need to compete in the SWAC right now they certainly have the offense as you mentioned and we'll see a couple of guys tonight on both sides who can tote the rock if you want to see running backs you're gonna see two of the best you can find in the conference in two different styles you talk about Kamani Clark just a freshman but he's in the athletic running back that can make the first defender miss it was his gutsy performance a week ago that really secured the first conference victory for Jackson State. If he can continue to play at a high level like that, the Tigers can ride their go-to running back, the freshman sensation. A career best for the freshman on the other side. You got a guy who can do literally everything, a prime time player in Dewanya Tucker. Senior running back that is Mr. Everything for Prairie View and then This offense goes through him. They get him the ball on the perimeter. They like to get him the ball off tackle where he can use his vision and his elusiveness. And more importantly, what makes him special he knows how to run behind his pads make himself small when he needs to then explode up the middle for the home run the Tucker one of the best running backs in all of FCS football averaging 108 yards per game who's ready well, I'll tell you the marching storm of Prairie View A&M say come bring it Jackson State Tigers Panthers when we come back Panthers getting ready for tonight's battle against the Jackson State Tigers. I'll tell you that this evening is going to be an interesting one given the fact that we felt a lot of wind when we were on the field earlier tonight, Jay. There's a chance of rain also looming over here in Prairie View A&M, or excuse me, in Prairie View, Texas. Yeah, and I think when you look at the conditions like that, that favors that favors uh, Jackson State, gives him the advantage. Prairie View's gonna try and throw the football a lot, whereas we know, oh, early. Look at this. They getting at it early. Well, you saw Jackson State already getting involved with the marching storm before the game, and again, emotions running high before tonight's game, but that's the type of attitude that both teams want to bring that energy and excitement, but also there's a discipline piece to it as well, Jay. Yeah, and they've got to learn. I mean, right now, you want to win this game. You have an opportunity to play on national television in a conference game. You're representing your school. You're representing your conference. You're representing your hometown. They don't need to see you throwing punches. They want to see you throwing pads, not punches out there. Get your emotions in check and play football. And we saw several white jerseys from Jackson State involved with the All Blacks on the other side for Prairie View A&M, both with highlights of pink and honor of breast cancer awareness. And uh, certainly, this is perhaps uh, the start of something interesting for, uh, throughout the rest of tonight. You got, you got to know who you are. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you're Jackson State, you have to be concerned about number five possibly mixing up whether that's Markel Gladney or D.D. Booth both of those guys are significant on offense and defense to their team getting into an argument with somebody that didn't have, not even dressed for the game yeah I think I may have seen Elvia Payton 36 as well as we go back to it and look flags already came out and this, and this is I, the entrance so they want to run all the way down to the other end zone and do the prayer but the Jackson State players were standing right there Blocking, blocking him. There's only so many hits you're going to take before one of them gets caught. And then it's time to get it going. Well, delay of game was called on 
Prairie View A&M. Jackson State won the toss, elected to defer, and back in the end zone is number one, Dewanye Tucker. Tucker elected to defer, and back in the end zone is number one, Dewanye Tucker. Tucker, a senior out of Terrell, Texas. This is what really makes him special now, his senior year. They're putting him on kickoff return to show the NFL team that he's a great return man as well. They kick it short and fielded at the 20 yard line by Caleb Broach. And Broach really, with not too far to go, gain of three on that return. So we'll get a chance to see this Prairie View AM offense who comes in putting up a bunch of points and a bunch of yards each game. When your head coach is a former offensive coordinator in this league, you expect the points to be there. We know that they can score, so they want this to be a shootout. I'm curious to see what Jalen Morden looks like throwing the ball with the wind and the other elements. Fifth year senior out of Arlington, Texas, and before the Panthers can snap the ball, the penalty marker comes Both out. Offense, number six. Five the first down. Called on Arrington Taylor, who won the starting spot up front at right guard for the Panthers. So Jalen Morton coming off a 10 for 12 weekend, 144 yards, a couple of TDs and an INT last weekend against Virginia Union of Lynchburg. Keontae Hampton, who is the guy on defense for Jackson State coming in to make the tackle. I will tell you what, this Jackson State defense Whatever they said to them to start the game, they are hyped up. They are talking, they're chirping, they're tracing down, running back sideline to sideline. Be interesting to see how long they can keep this intensity up. Morton back to pass, has Tucker, and completes the pass and brought down by Jakaiser Glass. Glass, the junior out of Greenwood, Mississippi, a pickup of five. See, they have to be careful. After every tackle, you're seeing a Jackson State guy in a prayer of you guys' face talking to him. You got to play football at a certain point. I'm sure the coaches love the emotion, but don't let the emotions get the best of you and you get called for an unnecessary roughness penalty. Third and long. Morton surveys the field and has his man, Xavier Johnson. Johnson with the completion and the first down. And this is what you love about Jalen Morton. Six foot four inch, 230 pound quarterback with a rifle of a right arm. He really excels in the vertical passing game, throwing the ball beyond 10 yards down the field. Effective passer, good runner, NFL prospect, Jalen Morton. Morton rolls out and has a man, Tony Mullins, who was wide open. Mullins in for the score. The junior out of Katy, Texas, so tough to defend. He's been the guy 63 yards for the touchdown. How's that for talking? Let your football do the talking. This is a Prairie View special. They do it more than any other school. This run pass option, gonna fake the run, then he's got an opportunity to throw the ball to a wide receiver short, or you saw Tony Mullins get behind the secondary. So much going on in the backfield. If you peak, you lose. Well-designed play by the Panthers. Amari Martinez on for the extra point. And the Panthers up 7-0 over Jackson State. A minute and 29 seconds to complete that drive, Jake. Oh, a lot to look at, but once you get a score like that and the play works out just how you draw it up, you feel like you're the genius. Oh, that's the way I drew it up, boys. Is everywhere. Navage is nature's decongestant. Online and at these fine retailers. Second year of the Eric Dooley era here at Prairie View a &M. The offensive mastermind helped to draw up that play to give his team a 7-0 advantage early on. Keyshawn Harper on the return for Jackson State. Runs into his own man, then bounces off. Finds some room up ahead. A great return to start things off for the Tigers just across the 40-yard line. Well, Jay, you go back to that touchdown drive for Prairie View and m what'd you see? They put a lot of pressure on and Take a look at the freshman cornerback here, number 14. 
And that's Deshaun Baker. His responsibility, look at him. He's looking in the backfield. He's peeking in the backfield. He thinks he sees something that's not there. Uh-oh, he gets turned around in the trail position. Great job of isolating the freshman, knowing he's going to be a little bit nosy, nosy. And they hit him for the big play. Well, Derek Ponder, the junior out of Bells, Texas, the quarterback for Jackson State. And in the first play is wide receiver Warren Newman falls down the pass incomplete now that's been a question mark all season long is who's going to start a quarterback for the tigers yeah well i think after the performance that ponder had last week he kind of nailed down the starting quarterback job at jackson state his best game of the season he came in in a relief effort down by 21 points brought the tigers back showed the leadership so i think it's his job to lose right now the handoff to jordan johnson and johnson upended by logan jackson johnson returning after missing last weekend's game he's been their guy but i still expect to see a heavy dose of kamani clark and right away after one carry looks like jordan johnson's that injury he had suffered two weeks ago may become a factor again so johnson Still down on the ground. You look at this Jackson State team. That was a win that they needed coming in at now two and five on the season, one and one overall in the SWAC. And John Hendricks said, you know, we needed that confidence booster. That was something that was important for us to gain going into a game like this tonight. Um, absolutely. And it goes either way. If they lose that game to Mississippi Valley, then the season's done. And, you know, you can just get that sense. And they came out in the second half and played with the chip on their shoulder. And that's the style of football that everybody thought they would see from Jackson State throughout the year. He's just trying to carry that momentum from that come from behind victory a week ago throughout the rest of the season. Johnson able to get back up and trot onto the sideline. And, of course, we expect to see a heavy dose of Kamani Clark, number 23 in white, as you mentioned, Jay. And he's lined up in the backfield along with Derek Ponder. Third and nine for the Tigers. Escape in the pocket. Ponder finds his man Warren Newman. And perhaps he just found that soft spot in the secondary. First down and more. And a great job of playing the quarterback position by Ponder. You see Ponder watch the vision as he steps up, slides to the right, keeps his head upfield, and finds an open Warren Newman on the sideline for the first down. 20-yard completion takes him into Panthers territory. On first down, Ponder rolling to his left, makes the throw, and it's incomplete. The intended receiver was Newman again. Interesting decision by offensive coordinator Ron Dickerson moving the pocket. The two times we've seen Ponder do a pure drop-back pass, he's been hit or flushed out of the pocket. That's not something that happens by coincidence. Jacksonville, Jackson State gives up 21 sacks on the season, 109th in all of FCS football. That's poor pass protection. How do they protect Ponder here? Quickly gets it out, finds his man, Didi Bowie, shakes and bakes, still on his feet, has a pathway to the end zone, and he's tripped up as penalty markers fly onto the field. Well, D.D. Bowie is one of those guys who can be electric in the passing game if you can get the ball to him. And feed him. Probably the best athlete on the field, the transfer from Ole Miss. Personal foul. Blind side block against the offense, number 85. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. I'll bring that back. That's on Kylan Ritchie, the tight end. And we've seen it. You got to keep your emotions in check. When you have a defenseless player trying to make a tackle, you can go and push him. I don't know about that. I think he saw him. And they both lowered the shoulder on each other. That, that, that's a tough one there. I understand the intent of the rule. But in that case there, Richie saw him. They saw each other, made eye contact, and engaged. Looked like it was going to be a blow-up hit, but that's a tough break there for Jackson State. Ponder gets it out once more. Newman, his favorite target so far tonight. Really, really product, productive for this group this year. The junior out of New Orleans, seeing his numbers go up from last year. And the punt return he had last week coming out of the second, uh, into the second half, really sparked that comeback effort. And that's what you expect from your vocal leaders. 
making it happen on the field when you get an opportunity in special teams as well as the receiver position. Third and short, bouldering up ahead was Keyshawn Harper picks up the first down. He's done a split job, if you will, with Jordan Johnson and Kimani Clark in the backfield. And really surprised that they are not going with Kimani Clark as much in this football game, considering the effort he had a week ago. He was the hot-handed running back. So now first and 10 from the Panthers 22 yard line. He started off with great field position after a great return from Harper. Now Pondo surveying the field, tries to go down the middle, finds his man, and the touchdown, Daniel Crowell. A 22 yard reception and it was thrown on a rope from Pondo. And they ran four verticals down the field and pick a scene. You got the three verts on one side and you'll see a nice cut and a poor angle on the defensive back. Reggie Stubberfield allowed Crowell to cross his face. You can't do that that deep in the secondary for the touchdown. In this formation here. Now they move into the traditional Kick, but there's three seconds to go on the play clock gets it off in time and the extra point is no good so daniel crowell the junior out of mississippi started at last chance you made his way over to jackson state he picks the score safe and protect home like a pro visit simplysafe.com for a limited time offer welcome back into prairie view our score seven six the panthers on top jackson state coming off of an eight play 59 yard scoring drive that just took over two minutes again a short punt keeping it away from number one Dewanye Tucker Jordan Jones on the return one of the tight ends on this offense and let's take a look back at that scoring play and, and this is great design by the concept so what you're gonna see here is what they call zipper route so you will see ponder locate this safety here to get him away he's got to freeze him but on this side here You've got one route that's going to come in here. Another one's going to kind of go there. He's in a bind. He can't be right. Great job of execution as we run it. Ponder freezes the one safety. Now you got one-on-one. -on -one. That guy has to guard two receivers. A little zipper route combination. Nice throw. Nice execution. Jalen Morton back on to engineer this offensive drive for the Panthers. He was three for three for 81 yards on the first possession. Jordan Jones collects it and close to the first down picks up nine jordan jones one of those guys who graduated from grambling state was recruited by eric dooley at his during his time at grambling state and then came on over to the panthers and he's starting to emerge as that go-to weapon that any good quarterback has to have a tight end in the middle of the field morton decides to call his own number picks up the first down brought down by khalil johnson Johnson, a four-year starter for this Tigers defense. So across midfield, the Panthers moving once again. Mullins in motion. Toss to him, and he's brought down in the backfield. Big play by Markel Gladney. Loss of four. And that's how you play that nickel position. Anything outside the tackle box does not get outside of you. You force it to the inside, and the moment they tried to turn on the speed to the outside, Gladney was in perfect football position. And this defense, giving up 36 points a game, has to try to limit the best offense in the swag. Morton mishandles the snap, picks it up, but really nowhere to go. Bubble! Ball is on the ground, and the Panthers are lucky to have recovered that one 
punched out by Jakaiser Glass, the linebacker out of Greenwood. We've mentioned him already. Yeah, but this is a poor job by Morton. Realizing once you get a chance to get the ball back, throw it away right, right away. He decided to try and look for something. Very fortunate to recover that fumble of his own. But after the bad snap, get rid of the football. Trying to do a little bit too much. Backs him up to about third and a mile for the Panthers. Morton with time going long has a man and just threw it over his left shoulder He was going for Travis O'Connor. Oh, he missed a wide open Kalen Riles number 85 running down the middle of the screen and that's just a poor decision where to go with the football They call four vertical routes find your best matchup and Riles beat his man by about seven or eight yards so far a solid game for Jalen Morton, that was his first incompletion of the ball game. Caleb Darborn on to punt, back to receive it is Warren Newman. Newman takes it off, off the bounce. Newman across the 25, the 30. He's still on his feet and finally brought down just near the 37 yard line. Well, Saturday, this rivalry dates back to 1887. Number eight, Notre Dame takes on Jim Harbaugh and the 19th ranked Michigan Wolverines at the Big House, 7.30 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. Notre Dame searching for their first win in, Ar in, an, in Ann Arbor and won there since 2005. The Jackson State offense trotting back onto the field. Now we'll see Kamani Clark. The handoff to the freshman out of Oak California. Spills ahead for a few. And you see that, that forward lean right there. That's what you want your good runners to have. Even when the hole's not there, that was a boring play, but he picked up four yards on first down. Once now again, the they hand it off to Kamani Clark, and Clark now over 200 yards rushing for the season, brought down by Reggie Stubblefield. Stubblefield, one of those guys in the secondary for the Panthers that they're happy to have back. Moving quickly, the Tigers snap it once again, feeding the rock to Kamani Clark. And you just like the vision that he shows, something that most freshmen don't have, the ability to change directions, the patience to set up a block. If they get behind him, it's only going to make their passing game that much more effective. Jackson State averages about 169 yards per game on the ground. The pass out to Ramik Wallace. And Wallace couldn't get to it on the coverage with Logan Jackson. He may have gotten a hand on it. And I'll tell you, Jackson State really struggles with their pass protection. Prairie View A&M's coming out with three defensive linemen, yet they're getting pressure on Ponder. And as a passing offensive system, that can't happen. If they can just rush three and drop eight in the coverage, it's a long day on the defensive side of the ball. Third and six, bringing some pressure coming. And Derek Ponder was able to get away, throws it away, but still he saw a few black jerseys in his face. And I'm telling you, they really struggled. That was just a typical strong side Sam linebacker blitz coming from the outside. And they don't pick it up. I mean, they're bringing it. You have to pick it up. Very fortunate that there was a missed opportunity for that sack there. And Ponder showing great ability to escape. But that was just too easy. Joshua Williams, along with Isaiah Washington, bringing that pressure. So now the Tigers back to punt. And Tony Mullins standing on his own 10-yard line. This one angled, and he collects it and just wisely trots out of bounds. So Prairie View A&M, we talked about just how lethal they can be on that side of the ball. Well, check this out. 37 points per game. That leads the swag. Better than that, let me tell you how many yards per game they pick up. Se second in the FCS with 514 yards per game, but that's indicative of their head coach Eric Dooley who we mentioned a longtime veteran assistant offensive coordinator. He's the guy that draws it up Morton on the carry picks up a few as he moves ahead 
what I like about a good offense. If you're going to be in an offense, I'd like you to be as good as advertised. That means offense shows up every week. And every week they show up. Doesn't matter if they're playing an FCS team, if they're playing a top 10 Nichols State team. They almost beat Nichols. They lost to them by less than a touchdown against the University of Houston. They put up 27 points. So this is an offense that travels. And bringing the pressure was big number 44, Vincent McIntosh, down for the sack. A loss of four. And the defense for the Tigers putting the Panthers offense in a quite of a predicament deep in their home territory. Yeah, they're trying to get Dewanye Tucker off. There's just nowhere to go. He elects to cut back against the grain and big Vincent McIntosh waiting for him. Morton on the pass and a couple of white jerseys surrounding Markel Gladden. He tried to go for it. Once again, we're seeing Prairie View trying to convert on third and long. And although Jalen Morton's got the big arm, you can't continue to think you're going to have success if you're going third and eight plus. First three and out today for the Panthers. Darborn back to punt once more. Watch out for Warren Noon back there in the punt return, one of the best in the conference. Not a lot of space, he collects it and was brought down just where he caught it. 7-6, we've got a good one brewing from Texas. Five two zero three. that's 800-630-5203. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. Welcome on to what they like to call the hill from Prairie View, Texas. Just after the top of the hour, Jay Walker, Tiffany Green here with you. 7-6 ball game. Both of these teams scored on their first offensive possession. And now with 6.23 to go, penalty markers out on the field before the snap. False start. Offense, number 60. Five yard penalty, it's first down. That on Amari catching, so that'll push his Tigers back five yards. I'll tell you, Derek Ponder coming off one of his better games of the season, the coaches felt like perhaps that was the best he's played all year. Seven of 26 for 194 yards, and again, Came in in a backup situation to get the win against Mississippi Valley State. Ponder delivered it right to Dee Dee Bowie, and the drop from the sophomore brings up second and long. And that's a catch you have to make if you're Dee Dee Bowie. Anytime an offensive coordinator calls a pass on first down, they don't need 10 or 15 yards. They just want five yards. And that was a five yard out route. Ball was thrown right in the breadbasket. Dee Dee Bowie does not help out this quarterback. So Bowie, as we mentioned, transferred in from Old Miss. Still learning that receiver position, but drop pass is something they can look forward. A handoff to Kamani Clark, oh. and boy, was he bottled up really quickly. Jason Dumas was chasing him down, loss of two, and then Reggie Stubblefield came to finish him off. And this is how you play team defense. One guy gets him low, and the other one cleans his clock high. Reggie Stubblefield, number 24, delivering that blow. Welcome to SWAC football, young <laughs> freshman Kamani Clark. Stubblefield, who we mentioned earlier, missed half of the season because of injury. So Ponder with the pass complete out to Kylan Ritchie, and Ritchie well short of the first down marker. That'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, they may go for it. And a flag on the field after the play, right in the area where Kylan Ritchie collected the reception. After the play, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, number 85, offense, 15-yard penalty. It's fourth down. 
Richie makes the catch, and then as he's, his leg gets held on, held on to for a little bit, and he comes free. And then he steps on Stubblefield. Ah. You make the argument, he, Stubblefield was clearly holding his leg. Right. But then you don't come back with something like that and then step on an opponent afterwards. Told you, we can tell this Jackson State team, they came up here fired up trying to prove a point, trying to, like they say, trying to pump this team a little bit. And, uh, Prairie hasn't backed down. It's going to be a physical matchup all night long, but in a game like this where currently it's close, you cannot make mistakes. You can ill afford for mental miscues. As we take a look at Prairie View a and school profile, just to give you a little history about them. Founded in 1876, second oldest public institution of higher learning here in Texas. Some notable alums I like there. Cynthia Cooper Dykes got to circle her on the list. The handoff to Dewanye Tucker, and he gets about three. Uh, Mr. T went here, but he's not an alumnus. <laughs> not an alumnus. Now you got to pay for that degree, and you got to get it. So <laughs> you say attended. And Kenny Burrow, of course, the NFL Hall of Fame. And Tucker going to the sideline after. That carry limping over, so he'll get tended to in the backfield as Caleb Broach. And Morton with nowhere to go, and again, the defense surrounding. This time, it's Keontae Hampton. Keontae Hampton there, Mr. Everything linebacker, but pretty sure there's going to be a flag in the defensive secondary that's going to give Prairie and m a first down, maybe a holding penalty. Going to play. Holding. Defense, number 14. The holding was on the eligible receiver. It's going to be an automatic first down. That's on Jay Sean Baker. And again, the Tigers keep shooting themselves in the foot. Yep, you see on the bottom of your screen, as he goes through, just never lets go. <laughs> By the rule of the law, receivers downfield, five, six yards down the line, down from the line of scrimmage. They're going to call that hole whether or not the ball is in the air or not. No play there as the true freshman called for the penalty. Remember, he got beat earlier. Now, the handoff. And maybe a gain of about a couple for Broach. Broach, the senior out of Rockwall, Texas. And this is where Eric Dooley, the head coach as well as offensive coordinator, when you lose DeWanye Tucker, you bring in Broach. Now, Broach, the game plan changes completely. Broach is a downhill runner. They're going to run him in between the tackles. So you're really limited in terms of what you can do in your running game, particularly with your running back out of the backfield. Second and eight. Morton looking. Nowhere to nice. go. Finally finds Tony Mullins, and Mullins finds a little crease, but a penalty marker down just near the 36-yard line of the Panthers. That was great quarterback play by Jalen Morton. So we'll see what the officials say. Head referee, what's the call? During the play, ineligible receiver downfield against the offense, number 70. Five yard penalty, replayed it down. That's called on the center, Danny Garza. This is rarely called. Let's see, right there in the middle on the hash mark. Look for somebody to block. He he doesn't touch anybody, but I mean, he's downfield. Oh, that's a gray area. That's a tough one. I mean, by rule, it's supposed to be two and a half, three yards. We've seen it go eight, nine yards before. <laughs> Get that call in that situation. But somebody wasn't even blocking anybody. That's a tough call. They're calling things a little bit tight down on the field. Broach brought down by the SWAC leading tackler, Keontae Hampton, also in on the tackle was the true freshman, Cleo Arrington. And I don't think we can talk about Keontae Hampton enough. I mean, he is that dude for Jackson State on defense. You see the numbers there. I really like, that's just one day's work. That was last week, but his speed, sideline to sideline, and a high intensity, high motor guy. Mullins in motion. Morton steps up, and a helmet came off, and Morton was wrestled to the ground by Khalil Johnson.
So Johnson with the helmet off and all still was able to take down the quarterback. Coming from that defensive end position and able to win his one-on-one -on -one matchup. And great job of bringing down the quarterback. Got to be careful for Jalen Morton. Secure that football a little bit. Very fortunate that wasn't a fumble. Almost blocked, but Darborn able to get it away. Fair catch called by Warren Newman as he watches it bounce out of bounds. Well, Jackson State, in the capital city of Mississippi, is a school with a proud tradition, more than 7,700 enrolled in the university. Several notable alumni, four NFL Hall of Famers listed there. Yes, but one that stands out above them all. I mean, Walter <laughs> Payton, the greatest running back of all time, arguably. Robert Brazil, Lim Barney, and Jackie Slater. And, you know, Shout out to Cassandra Wilson. Wilson. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a jazz fan, so she's a wonderful jazz singer. Keyshawn Harper on the carry, and Harper was popped and brought down by Joshua Williams, a pickup of about a trio. And of course, you talk about Jack State, got to give a shout out to the sonic boom of the South. They didn't make the trip. Along with the J sets. <laughs> but we did see them in Itabina last weekend. And boy, they bring it. I'm impressed. I'm <laughs> impressed with their band. They are a fun band to watch and listen to. Second and seven for Derek Ponder. Ponder finds. Didi Bowie, Bowie in that seam and then moves to the outside. Hey, I'm gonna tell you, man, at Prairie View A&M, like defense is optional. <laughs> <laughs> it's optional. Look how wide open these wide receivers are. If you don't get to the quarterback, look at all that space there. Down 20 yards down the field, and we've seen several wide receivers find creases like that. They really struggle on the backside of their defense, stopping people from throwing the football. 30-yard pickup, sets up first and 10. Keyshawn Harper on the carry. I'll tell you this, some more jawing going on back and forth between these two teams, but this means a lot for, for both teams. I mean, again, one and one for Jackson State in the conference, two and two for Prairie View A&M, but they don't control their own destiny moving forward. Where Jackson State can win out, you never know. That's why they think if they can turn the season around, as tough a start as it's been for Coach John Hendricks, they still have this one loss in conference. They're going to have an opportunity to play all point at the end of the year. They can win some games prior to that. And nearly picked off by Reggie Stubblefield, and Stubblefield on the way down knew he should have held on to it as a penalty marker he is on the field. Pass interference. Defense, number 33. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's on the true freshman, Tariq Momore. <laughs> it's a tough one there coming. You see him on the left side. Engage is right there. I, I hope that's not pass interference. You got to be kidding. They're calling it tight, but I mean, that's just, you, you're taught you can't let him have a clean release up the scene. So all he did was a little reroute. I mean, that was just a little reroute. Ball wasn't in the air when he had the contact. I'm going to disagree with that one. The much talked about Jalen Jones now in at quarterback. Transferred in from Florida. Hands it off to Keyshawn Harper. Harper with room up ahead. But again, more laundry on the field back at the 25-yard line near side. This comes back. How many big plays will he have seen just in one quarter alone get negated by penalties? All sides. Defense. That penalty will be declined. The results of the play is the first down. This one goes against Prairie View AM, so the run remains and more. There's a pickup of 19. Jones still operating at quarterback. Rolls out to his left. Decides to tuck it and run and brought down just near the two. And you have to know who's in there. One of the keys we have for Prairie View, when we talk to them defensively, what's the key? They said know who the quarterback is. Whether it's Derek Ponder or Quincy Casey or Jalen Jones. When Jalen Jones comes in, they're going to run the ball first. 
unless you absolutely take away the run, he's a run first quarterback in this offense right now. Jones trying to go for it once again and nowhere to go met by black jerseys, including Isaiah Washington, a loss of one. And that does it for the first quarter. Well, it started off heated. Teams ready to go. Both get into the end zone. 7-6, Panthers on top. Wish now and get up to $700 off the new iPhones. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by McDonald's. Back here at Panther Stadium, Jackson State. Trying to add another score, and up ahead is Keyshawn Harper for the touchdown. A three-yard run into the end zone, and Jackson State with their first lead of the ball game. That's just... When Jalen Jones is in there, bring together your best run defense package. And this is just how you draw it up there. If somebody in motion, you just have to want it more. He gets into the end zone easily down there on the goal line. No threat at all. Quincy Casey in at quarterback trying to go for that two-point conversion. And they come up short. Jason Dumas there on the stop. So Dumas, the big sophomore out of St. James, Louisiana. Do you like that decision here? Well, they're trying to outflank him, but he has to realize you have three black jerseys there ready to make a tackle with only two blockers in front of you. And Jay, we've seen a quarterback shuffle at that position, a mixture of Derek Ponder, Jalen Jones, and Quincy Casey. We've all seen them tonight. Yeah, and, you know, the, the competition was between Jalen Jones and Derek Ponder in the preseason camp. Ponder held on to the held on to the spot over the much touted transfer from Florida, Jalen Jones. But then both of them played so so. So they wanted to jump start this offense and they gave Quincy Carter, Quincy Casey, I'm sorry, an opportunity for the start. And he looked good in one game, and then last week versus Mississippi Valley played poorly, and I think Ponder came in and kind of secured his quarterback position again. But and you wonder why, you know, Jackson, Jackson State hasn't quite met the expectation. When you're doing with a three-quarterback system, normally your offense hasn't found a rhythm. I was going to say, sometimes we've seen it work with a two-quarterback system. Kind of go back to the days of Tim Tebow and Chris Leak at Florida when we saw that work to perfection. But when you're trying to add in another person, it can be difficult to wind a Tucker on this kickoff return. And Tucker brought down just near the 20-yard line by Demetric Vance. Well, you mentioned the duty of Dewanye Tucker and that responsibility being added on kickoff returns. We saw him go down earlier, but he's back onto the field. How can they get him involved? They need him. Get him out of the backfield. Right now, you give credit to Jackson State. When he's in the game, he's a target. They're keying him. So you may have to use him out of the backfield on some swing passes to get him going in open space. C.J. Holmes showing blitz coming off that corner position, but throwing it away in time with Morton. Yeah, I think this is a, a mishap by the wide receiver out there, Jared Scott. Scott pointed to the corner blitz coming. He called cat, 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 which is a corner blitz call. So when you say that, if he comes, Jalen Morton did the right thing. Pull up, get him the football. Only problem was Scott decided to run downfield and block. Morton getting the call from the sideline, second and ten. And the handoff to Tucker, and Tucker continuing to create his own space, and he's out in the open. A lot of real estate up ahead, and a great block into Wade Tucker. He's the man. Come at your boy. That's what you need to have, and that's why you force feed the football to Dewanye Tucker. Nothing there at all. It was a great job of stuffing the run by the Jackson State defensive line. But watch the vision. Watch him get small. Look, where's he going? They've got bodies there. He makes one person miss. 
finds a crease with a juke move and then shows you the ability to be the home run hitter in the open field, you're not going to catch DeWanye Tucker, let alone touch him. Did you see that? He made Keontae Hampton miss the leading tackler in the SWAC. The extra point is good, 14-12 advantage. They say DeWanye Tucker is the heartbeat of the team. The longest play from scrimmage for Prairie View A&M. And the Panthers with the lead. Build your custom channel lineup and get thousands of top shows and movies on demand. Learn more at Sling.com. Bye. Okay. We saw at the start of the game, Marching Storm said, we ready. The Panthers on the field answering the same 14-12. It's Prairie View a &M with the advantage here from Panthers Stadium. Amari Martinez set to kick it off. Back to receive it, Josh Littles. Littles, the junior, brought down just about the 25-yard line. Going back to that shifty run from Dewanye Tucker. This is football. I want you to take a look at Keontae Hampton right there. Dewanye Tucker eyes him the whole time. Hampton's the best defensive player on this Jackson State defense. He's got an opportunity to make a huge play at the line of scrimmage. Nope. Nice shift. Change of direction by Tucker with another juke move. That's just, I'm a little bit better athlete than you are tackler <laughs> in that situation. Give it up to the offense, making a miss in a big way. Dewanye Tucker Mr. Everything, as you mentioned, for the Panthers. Jordan Johnson in the backfield with Derek Ponda. Johnson on the carry, bouldering up ahead, moving a pile with him, and a good run on first down for the senior out of Bryan, Texas. And that's how you have to, on first down, you got to force your will on Purdue. We talked about how defensively they struggle. I mean, they give you the most vanilla coverages you're going to see out there. They give you basic front. Take advantage of it schematically, push them around a little bit, and I think that would be good for Jackson State because Prairie View wants to get you in a shootout. They hate long drives. Second and short, they give it right back to Johnson. He does his job, picks up the first down, brought down by Jason Dumas. Dumas is, he's a good one. Six foot, 230 pound sophomore. But he's their best defensive lineman. He's a guy that can play inside. He can play defensive end. They move him all around the defensive front. Coaches say it starts up front with him. Empty backfield for Ponder. And Ponder finds D.D. Bowie right there in the soft part of the coverage. And brought down by Logan Jackson. I, am I going to say it again? I mean, defense is optional. Prairie View and them. D.D. Bowie running. That's too open down the field. 25 yards down the field. He's done it several times tonight. They're just so vanilla with their coverage. Johnson trying to go to the outside and met by a bevy of black jerseys. That'll bring up second and eight. Treshawn Smith, a name that we haven't called at all for Prairie View A&M's defense. He's their leading tackler out of Centralville, Mississippi. They've got to find a way to get him going. Yeah, and they need him to be the run stopper tonight. If Jackson State's going to move the ball and be behind their rushing attack, Treshawn Smith, the middle linebacker, has to be more physical today. He has to be a run stopper. Ponder rolling out and finds Kobe Gates. Gates, the tight end out of Walnut Grove, Mississippi, and the senior picks up four. He's moving him outside the pocket, and you have to think now where they are, this is two down territory. So four downs, they're gonna have to go for it. The key here is if you're Derek Ponder, don't take a sack, don't throw the interception. You're gonna have two plays to try and get this first down. And not be surprised if they get enough people spread out, they decide to run the football on the inside. So far, pretty decent on third down efficiency. Three for five tonight. The line again, the 29 yard line. Ponder delivers it right there. And just near the sticks, I think it's good enough for the first down. Kobe Gates with the reception once again. This right here just going to come right across the formation. Set up, box up big. 
Nice throw, nice catch, pick up the first down, keep the drive alive. Good job by the tight end, Kobe Gates. But I wouldn't get past that one. They should go back to running the football, but they still do struggle protecting their quarterback. He handed off to Keyshawn Harper. Harper going up the right side, and a penalty marker flies out at the end of the play. How many penalties have we seen so yeah. far in this game? It's like flag day here in Texas. Going to play personal foul, blind side block against the offense, number 25. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. We put it down. That's on Daniel Crowell. And take a look at Crowell. You see him coming from the top of your screen. He's looking for somebody. Oh, man. He turned the shoulder a little bit. <laughs> They're calling it tight. I mean, you know. And the flip side, to it, I I'm all for the rule change. You have to call that block. However, I think in that case there, if Crowell doesn't lower his shoulder or turn his shoulder, the defensive back runs right over <laughs> Ponder finds number five, Bowie, Bowie moving back to the middle of the field. And then finally brought down. And I think, Jay, it goes back to your question of how many how many yards are you going to give D.D. Bowie? You I mean, know he can hurt you in space. Yeah, they're just dropping. They're playing all quarters, and they're getting distracted. So you let a receiver go 10 yards down the field with a free release without giving a reroute. And that's just an easy throw and catch. And they, they've got the same look, so if I'm Jackson State, I'm calling the exact same play. Bowie to the bottom of your screen. Ponder with plenty of room on the right side, lets it go, and the pass complete to Daniel Crowell. So Crowell, who had that personal foul penalty, now helps them pick up the first down and move into the red zone. I mean, they're playing all quarters, and these wide receivers are wide open. Great job of catching the football, getting his hands underneath. But, you know, and open wide receivers, like with a two-yard separation, I mean, we're seeing like five, six-yard separations on every throw. Time to change it up and maybe get backed up. They may decide to bring a blitz for some pressure to try and force Ponder to throw the ball a little bit early. Ponder, once again, delivering it. Has all kinds of time. He's getting the pass protection that he needs. Fine Crowell. Once again, a pickup of eight. What do you do here on a second and short with a driving Tigers team? Defensively, I mean, it's too late for you to try and blitz, so you've got to play man-to-man -man coverage and hope they make a mistake, but they've done a pretty good job of mixing it up on this drive between run and pass. Keyshawn Harper trying to get outside, and Harper leans over, holds the ball out, and do they call it a touchdown? Still conferring. That's a touchdown. Whoa. They're calling it a touchback. See, it's a, they're saying it's the only reason to touchback if he fumbled the ball out of bounds before he broke that plane. Rolling on the field is the runner fumbled the ball before entering the end zone. The fumble went out the back of the end zone. We have a touchback. Well, that's what we place for. Right. <laughs> We're we going to take gonna a look. Because <laughs> yeah. he just had to beat Jalen Harris. That's not the guy, number 23. He's he got stretched the football. Out. He's got the football. Uh, it looks like he had possession yep. going across. across. Possession, possession, and then he loses yeah. it there. So. The question is, when does he lose it? But it looks like he breaks the plane right there. Breaks the plane, loses the ball when he's out of bounds after he broke the plane. And did he hit the pylon with his arm? You see there, he may have just grazed it. Yeah, because the pylon goes down. Pylon caused the fumble. Yeah. <laughs> no. But here, again, you look at the fact that this Jackson State team is coming to play. Again, they didn't maybe, maybe start out with the expectations or, or meet the expectations that they're looking for, but these are the type of 
hustle plays, what you want to see out of your group after a two and five start. The effort, there's the push in the back. But tell you what, the, the more you start to play with that thing, you start to wonder when does he start to lose that control. But I think he's got a. I don't know, it seems like from every angle that we've seen, it looks like he has control when he goes across and then loses it. And you can tell the replay officials there having a hard time taking a look at all these different angles as well. And I'll say this, it's not as clear cut as it looked when, I, when we first saw it. In the longer discussions, they obviously are looking at every angle and one thing I've learned throughout this, they've got different camera angles than we have here as well. So what we're able to show you may not always be what they're taking a look at. But I do believe this. In this situation, you have to be absolutely sure mm -hmm. that he was fumbling that football before he broke the plane. So John Hendrick awaiting, and again, the officials taking a while to confer and try to get it right. After further review, the runner maintained possession of the ball, entered the end zone with the ball before losing the ball, therefore it is a touchdown. So Jackson State sees six more points go onto the scoreboard after that Harper touchdown. And holds on to the football, and you see there doesn't lose control till after he's broken the end zone. And quite honestly, the ball was out of bounds by the time he lost control of it. Salazar. On to attempt the extra point. And he's able to boot it through. 19-14, Jackson State with the lead. Well, after he heard it, Keyshawn Harper said, let's start dancing, baby. I feel good. To help keep her at her adventurous best. I am who I am. Saturday, we'll have a college football doubleheader from you as... We're joined back here at Panther Stadium. The Hill. The Hill, that's what they like to call around these parts. And right here for you on the ACC Network and the ESPN app, Virginia, the leaders in the Coastal, take on four and three Louisville at 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Then we'll have fourth ranked Clemson hosting Boston College in Death Valley on our ACC primetime matchup presented by Geico. Dewine Tucker picks it up, and uh -oh. Dewine Tucker has plenty of room down the right side. He has a couple of men to beat, and then finally, Jackson State swarms around him, but a great kickoff return from Dewine Tucker. He's their best football player. I mentioned it earlier. I like the fact they have him on kickoff return. He sees the crease with the vision, and then watch him turn on the Jets. I give credit to number 88. How do you not fall down? He's making cuts like that, setting up his blockers. Big return for Dewanye Tucker. However, uh oh. Before, half the distance to the goal. First down. I mean, do, do they want us to play football <laughs> game here today? At some point, or do they want to keep it flag day? That negates a 56-yard return from Dewanye Tucker. It's been frustrating, really, on both sides. Jay, you asked earlier how many penalties we've seen. That's 11 now for the game. And we're in the second quarter, the beginning of the second quarter. <laughs> and you knew they were called a little bit tight because of the pregame antics that were going on. And I understand that, but we've gotten beyond that now. And we've seen a number of questionable calls, too. To be yeah. quite honest, some yeah. of them have been questionable. Jalen Morton back out to lead the number one offense 
in the swag. They like to score fast. That's one of the things that we heard Eric Dooley talk about. Not giving his defense maybe enough rest as they fly. Jalen Morton once again finds Tony Mullins. Mullins is brought down and slammed to the ground by Demetric fans. But again, that play continues to work for the Panthers. They see it. Yeah, what they call this one is the same play, different side. So they're going to go the run pass option. And they catch a cornerback looking in the backfield. And it's a great play for Prairie View. But there's another flag. Penalty. So they're calling the illegal man down the field again and the tough part about that is You rarely see that call, mm -hmm. you know, there's no definitive. He can't be beyond three yards or two yards So the line of scrimmage is on the 13. I mean that ball guys up to 16 maybe That's the second time we've seen that call tonight Jay Calling it tight I mean, they are calling it tight. And it hasn't been good for the home team, Prairie View yeah. A&M. Both of those penalties have gone on Prairie View A&M. And you just think, when you're trying to get a drive together, how much that slows you down and takes away some of your rhythm. And if you're Eric Dooley, you know, we talked to him before the game. He said, look, we've gotten too many penalties especially over the last few weeks we've got to find a way to cut that down and that is something they felt like they did a better job of last week against Virginia Union of Lynchburg I mean, you know, Lynchburg that was homecoming yeah supposed to win that's that day to get him going but I mean you can see this offense is explosive but and I like the most I like what he said was he said we need to have longer drive we need to hold on to the ball a little bit more so we're not keeping our defense on the field so much. Mm -hmm. So they're back inside their 10, inside the 10. And on second down, he finds his man, Kalen Riles. I think they say he holds on to it, but boy, did he take a big hit from Tyler Rogers. I mean, but I don't like to celebrate. They just completed the first down on him. Down the scene, watch him stick the route. And he comes over Tyler Rogers. Oh, he dislodged the ball. They're saying no catch But Tyler Rogers Makes a huge hit you don't see hits like that too often in college football nowadays with all the safety rules But that was a textbook Dislodging of the ball. I'm sure they've got to take a look at this to see if this was a catch And now you hear the whistles blow And they will get a chance to review it And this has been something that has been under review quite a bit over the last few years about is it a catch and what makes a catch? We'll hear from the official first. And I'm the type, I'm starting to say it's a catch until you can prove to me it's not a catch. And that's kind of what I've always thought it was, but then we've seen so many times we're like, oh, that's a catch, a guy made a move and then got hit and they call it an incomplete pass we'll take a quick break while the officials sort it out come back with us to texas six nine that's eight hundred six two four three five six nine Review underway and the ruling on the field an incomplete pass But they also looked at targeting as you mentioned Tyler Rogers came in and delivered a big blow as we take a look back at it first Does he have possession? I don't, is it think, a catch? I don't think they'll call this a catch. I think this is a Solid hit this live. You don't see those collisions hardly anymore But you'll see as he's going to the ground. He starts to lose possession of that football So I think the officials might have gotten it right on the field calling this an incomplete pass and for that, uh, for that launch, that's about as close as you can get away with today's college football now. <laughs> you can't hit him any harder than that. You can't launch anymore. He's fortunate they didn't call him for the targeting, so it becomes an incompletion and no targeting pill. Brings up third and 10. 18-yard line is the line to gain. Morton with all kinds of time trying to find an open man. 
and then it looked like the a defender got there early on Jordan Jones and there's the flag. I mean, that's so the secondary <laughs> bails him out right secondary there. Secondary bails him out. They had him pretty well covered. He was open for a split second, but Gladney got there too soon before the ball arrived, and that's pretty clear pass interference. What? It's a offsetting penalty. Okay. Microphone's not working. They're calling another ineligible receiver downfield, ineligible participant downfield, and a pass interference. The PI was clear. I mean, he goes there, he shields him from getting over there to the football. That's pass interference. But another penalty for ineligible band downfield. And Are they calling um, on the maybe Arrington Taylor again? I, I, I don't know. I couldn't I, I see. It seemed like it looked, yeah, that, that's tough. They're, they're squeezing it. And Jackson State will spend a timeout here, their first of the half. And you can see an impassioned John Hendrick there. And I think there were only 10 players on the field, so obvious frustration there. And these are the things they have to tighten up a little bit for, for Jackson State if they want to be one of those upper echelon teams when you come in here on the road you have to realize that sense of urgency you have to play a little bit tighter on the road and they've been the beneficiary of what I think have been some very questionable calls so we saw those offsetting penalties, and we look back at that ineligible participant downfield. The third time called against the Panthers. Let's look at this last one. I mean, ball's at the eight-yard line, so quarterback takes a pretty deep drop. So be downfield, you got to be somewhere around the 13, 14-yard line. And God, I mean, that's tight. You're talking three yards, three and a half. That's that's they're calling it tight. Warren dropping back and finds. Mullins, but just overthrows him. That brings up fourth down. Elvia Payton on the coverage. Second three and out tonight. For Prairie <laughs> that Indiana. was only three plays. It seemed like it took like <laughs> five minutes. <laughs> that was the longest three and out I've seen in a while. <laughs> Give credit to this Jackson State defense. Though. I mean, this is an offense that is very highly touted, number one offense in the conference, and held them to just two scores so far. out and like I said before watch out for Warren Newman here on the return Newman he feels this thing on the run he can do some damage just about the 49 yard line picks it up Newman trying to find any crease he can still on his feet and brought down just near the 30 yard line if you're just joining us it's been an interesting game thus far. Tony Mullins was able to get on the board first for Prairie View a and on a 63-yard touchdown. Each team scored on their first drive. Jackson State missed a couple of extra points, but they're on top after a couple of Keyshawn Harper touchdowns. Second time tonight, the Tigers starting in Prairie View a and territory. And just nowhere to go and slam down to the ground by Jason Dumas. Dumas is that guy we mentioned who creates havoc on the field wherever he is. Yeah, if they, if they can find him in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, they're going to use him. That's where you're going to see him line up most of the game. And it seems like he's had a lot of success anytime they line him up over Cedric Dunbar, that right guard. And they've got the Maxson who's in there playing guard as well. Max is the backup center, so Jason Dumas is lined up against number 55 and saying, we're going to go to work today. The hand off to Jordan Johnson. Johnson finds a lot of room, running room up ahead and then a marker at the end of the play. Yeah, here's my own beef going to be. 
If you're going to call this many penalties, make sure your mic works. <laughs> <laughs> Turn your batteries on. We have to be able to hear what we're talking about. <laughs> and the penalty is continuing to mount up on both sides. And we, we think it's number 55 here, and that's going against Dumas. That's Maxson, who's the backup center. And that's tight. <laughs> They're just calling it tight. I mean, you have to be able to engage the defensive lineman. So Maxim being replaced along catchings in. There's Derek Ponder. Ponder finds D.D. Bowie and just nowhere to go being swung around by Story Jackson. That's good for about three yards, third down. Now, if you're Prairie View, now you can play that very conservative vanilla coverage in your secondary you've been doing. Keep everything in front of you. Nobody gets behind you and come up and make the tackle. Let's see if they can execute something that simple. Keep everything in front. Come up, make the tackle. Tip. Keep everything in front. Come up and make the tackle. We'll see how they handle third and long. Flanks it out, and Ponder just threw it through the hands of Kamani Clark. Clark couldn't bring it in. I don't know if he would have gotten much on that one, but you put it in the hand of your playmaker if you can. Yeah, and that's what they were going to do. They were going to challenge him and say, okay, we know you're going to drop deep. We're going to get the ball to a running back in the flat and see if you can make the tackle. Now, we don't know how that would have played <laughs> out, but give credit where credit's due. Been hard on this Prairie View a and defense, so they got to stop. Just to think that drive started at the 30, and all they did was go backwards. The punt. And this one, good one, was a great one pinned inside the five-yard line. Where our next UFC event on ESPN Plus is Saturday, October 26 at 8 a.m. Eastern from Singapore Indoor what's Stadium. The, what's our? Uh, 8 a.m. Okay. Just in case you were wondering, <laughs> make sure you get up on a Saturday. Damian Maya taking on Ben Askren in the welterweight main event. A matchup between the two top in the 170 pound grapplers. Make sure you order it prelims starting at 5 a.m. Eastern. So, just in case you have some insomnia, let's go. The Panthers deep in their own territory. Dewanye Tucker trying to give them any breathing room that they can. And again, coming off limping on the field. Yeah, they've been rough on him tonight, but. Take a look, and they're going to need him to come back. But he seems like he's not really able to put a lot of pressure on the right side of his body. And Ella Forker, their senior running back, to go down. Caleb Broach powering ahead, brought down by C.J. Anderson. But again, go back to that last play. Duane Tucker makes a cut. Thinks he sees something and probably tripped over his own leg and lands a little bit awkwardly. Fortunately for Panther fans, has to limp over to the sideline. He remains off the field, third and one. Caleb Broach in the backfield with Morton. Morton calls his own number. Morton across the 25-yard line, brought down near the 30. But guess what, Jay? I don't know what. Big uh, play by Jay Morton. <laughs> Flags out. Oh, another penalty. See a helmet came off, so maybe they're gonna call hands to the face. You got it, Jay. You, should, you do this in your spare time. <laughs> Every now and then, <laughs> go to official school too. You're gonna, you're gonna test me on all the rules tonight. So that moves the Panthers up ahead, and Eric Dooley. Again, you talked about trying to sustain drives and milk the clock. This is a good opportunity here to not only try to take the lead, but also run down this clock as much as he can. Jalen Morton trying to go to the outside, and it's intercepted by Jayshon Baker. Baker has some blockers up ahead down the right side, trying to tiptoe, and he's pushed out of bounds. 
Well, this is a guy, a true freshman who won over the starting position, starting to see a lot of playing time, and there he comes up with a big pick. Just, just throw the ball away. When we ask Prairie View offensive coordinators, when Morton struggles, why is it? It's because he tries to do too much. They got you. You pulled the ball out. Now just throw it away. Throw the ball out of bounds. I mean, that's not even close. That's a gimme touchdown only because he made the decision to pull the ball out, call his own number. Nothing wrong with second and ten. And that's those decisions that have come from Jalen Morton a little bit too often in some crucial moments for Prairie View A&M. And a great redemption for Baker who gave up that touchdown on a pass interference penalty. 42-yard return, and now Ponder gets the Tigers going. Crowell falls down after that reception. Brings up second down. Just over four minutes to go in this first half. Jackson State, the 19-14 lead. And, and, and that's so big because you're trailing by five. You have the ball in your opponent's side of the field. You're, you're thinking field goal or score to end the half to get a little bit of momentum. And a, call, a catch brought back in. He had to kind of go away from his body, but Keyshawn Harper able to bring it back in. Didn't pick up anything on that one. And now third down. Isaiah Washington was the one bringing the pressure. So the Tigers need to get to the 15 to pick up the first down. Ponder escaping the pressure, still on his feet, lets it go, and nobody there. So after the escape, well, that's a difference between Ponder and Morton in this game. After the great escape, when he should have been tackled for a sack, good job escaping this for sure. Sack gets away from it, not there. Okay, he's just gonna get rid of it. He's not gonna force something, some crazy throw. You keep possession of the football. And I think that's what the Prairie View and M coaches wanna see from their senior quarterback and Jalen Moore, just get rid of the football. Adrian Salazar on to attempt the 39 yard field goal. It's up. And it's good. So put up three more for Jackson State. And they have a lead on the road at 22-14 now stretching it out. That ties a season long for Salazar this season. He also hit a 39-yarder against Alabama State. And remember, he was the hero in overtime last weekend. They got the kick and you know, you just have to say it again, all those JSU fans, we know how they work. I mean, they, they are active. They love their Tigers. They love them. And take a look at the field goal made again. As bad as it's gone this season for them, as bad as it's gone, if they went out, they will be the champions of the SWAC East. <laughs> they went out. They've got to win out. And it starts here tonight. And this is a good statement from them here on the road taking on a very explosive, offensive-minded Prairie View and a &M team. And they've got an opportunity to go into halftime with the lead, which I'm sure many of them didn't believe was going to be the case considering they were losing by 21 points to Mississippi Valley just this past weekend. Yeah. ...about winning out, five-time defending SWAC East champions Alcorn is their last game of the season, the Soul Bowl, but they've got a gauntlet schedule to close out the year to the Tigers. Jeffrey Rector on the kickoff return, as we mentioned, DeWine Tucker injured, and Rector is wrapped up. And I think that's an interesting conversation, Jay, because again, we saw this Jackson State team under interim head coach at the time, John Hendrick, have his team win the last two out of three games last year. And that's what they're hoping they can do this year again, in strong. You know, that's what had all the high expectations. So, Jackson State starting to play good football. 
new quarterback in and Trazon Connolly, the redshirt freshman from right here in the Lone Star State. And DeWine Yeh Tucker was wrapped up immediately in the backfield. Khalil Johnson was the first guy to get to him. And I will say this, this is not uncommon for them to pull Jalen Morton. When he's made some mistakes like this, sometimes they'll grab him and say, I want you to sit next to me on the sideline, take a look at what's going on, what you're not seeing. I full expect we'll see Jalen Morton back in this football game. Connolly wrapped up and brought down by Vincent McIntosh. McIntosh with a sack. And now third down, just over two minutes to go, deep in your own territory, a new quarterback running your offense for the Panthers. What do you call here on third and long? A passing situation, so you've got to throw the football. When they talk about him, they say he's energetic, doesn't have the big arm like Morton, but is a quicker runner. So he's a little bit more threat in the running game. Now the freshman's gonna get an opportunity to throw the football in an obvious pass situation. He clears wow. up those back-to-back -back negative plays with the reception from Kalen Riles and a big throw on third down from what Connolly. A, oh, what a blown coverage. I mean, they came out with third down. They're just going to run verticals. I mean, just watch the scene right side of your screen. He's open now. You know, linebackers talked to drop chase, didn't reroute at all. And that's an easy, <laughs> easy throw and catch for a first down. 22-yard reception. Ball now spotted at the 41-yard line. Minute 46 to go in this first half. The handoff, fake, and Connolly trying to go somewhere, nowhere to go. Jakaiser Glass and Khalil Johnson right there in his face. And, and you hate to do it, but that play would leave my, my playbook right now because they're calling you. Anytime you pull it, they're calling you for an illegal block down the field, ineligible receiver downfield. So don't call that play. Take it out of the hands of your quarterback because it's not worth the risk reward right now. Prairie View AM spends a timeout. We'll step aside along with it. Focus on what matters to you with Think or Swim. Jalen Morton started this game 5 for 5 for 86 yards and a touchdown. Since then, he's been 0 for 6. And now Trazon Connolly, the backup in on this drive. Trying to go down the sideline, has a man. And through the hands of Tristan Wallace, Wallace the first time he's been targeted tonight. And that's a surprise because when we talked to him, they said they have to get him going early, get him the football. Tristan Wallace took the HBCU world by storm last season. Making an impact, the six foot three inch, 220 pound wide receiver was a transfer from the University of Oregon. And one on one, he's, he's a nightmare. I don't know how many defensive backs you have in this conference that can cover him. A little surprised you're just now starting to go his way with football. Third and 11, stepping up and brought down quickly by Jamani Crane. Crane, the sophomore out of Puckett, Mississippi, and a loss of five. This defense playing inspired right now for John Hendrick. They've, they've been energetic and this is just I want to get to the quarterback one-on-one -on -one makes a nice move nowhere to go and crane comes up with the sack fourth sack tonight for this Tigers defensive unit and this is a defense that only had nine sacks on the season coming into tonight's ball game and just let you know how poor the pass protection has been for Prairie View A&M just a reminder that coming up at the half, we'll have Jay's power rankings plus give me five and first half stats and highlights as well. And you go back to last weekend and what really helped the Tigers turn the corner being down 21 nothing was their defense. And give credit, good job of coaching. They came here inspired, ready to play football. And right now they're kind of having their way with Prairie View and and they forced their will on them. Darborn gets it away. And it's down just near the 40-yard line. So with a minute 10 to go, and Jackson State with the lead, they'll have one more drive before they head into the locker room. And remember, they'll get the ball.
to start the second half. Your season is on the line. If they lose a game, season's over, so stay aggressive. You have an opportunity with decent field position to run a drive with a minute and 10 and a timeout. Quarterback with some experience that throws the football. I'm trying to put some more points on the board. Ponder does throw the deep ball well, flushed out the pocket, and almost intercepted. They say he comes up with it. No, but right there was Jalen Harris. Harris, who has two interceptions on the season. Remember, he had a big one against Southern for pick six. Wow. Jalen Harris with a missed opportunity for a huge play. One of the few mishaps we've seen from Derek Ponder involved. This hits him right there. Right there in the numbers. Well, they say a defensive back, particularly a cornerback, is nothing but a wide receiver that can't catch. <laughs> and we saw there he clearly. Play whistle dead. And I'm curious to know with the penalty and with the poor decision by Pond on the previous play, do they still stay aggressive with their play calling and trying to put some points on the board? I think it's desperate times. I'm still throwing the football. You give me a minute and a timeout and the college quarterback with the clock stopping at the first down. Pick up a couple yards, you should be able to at least get a field goal attempt in the half. But <laughs> they elect to run it instead. But you know what? You're coming from, you're a quarterback. You're yeah. always going to be a quarterback. So you always want the, the ball in your hands and giving yourself a chance. Yeah, I, and that's why. I think yeah. if you, a, a deadly offense does that too. However, I think we say time and time again whenever the head coach is a defensive minded guy first, the former defensive coordinator. They tend to play things a little bit close to the chest. In this situation, they just don't want the offense to hurt them anymore. They feel like they've got a solid defensive game plan. Jackson State taking their time, winding down the clock as much as they can. Four to go on the play clock. And Keyshawn Harper was wrapped up and brought down by Jason Dumas. But yeah. again, a flag, he was maybe a little early. He was, he was early, but I mean, you know, that's... That's the thing. They called the run play again. Defense, number 93, five-yard penalty, third down. And, and I, I don't you, you're telling me with a minute to go, you don't trust your quarterback to get you 30 yards with a minute before the half. Give us a field goal try. And the answer to that question, Jay, is an obvious no here. Yeah. But again, maybe they were a little tentative after that throw from Ponder. They were backed up five yards. They have the lead. They want to go into the locker room maintaining the lead. Jackson State overall, though, pretty good first half. Put 22 points up on Prairie View A&M on the road. And again, remember, it started a little chippy as the teams go into the locker room. Right now, it's all good. John Hendrick has to be pleased as his team is playing well, led by their defense. Jackson State fans were in the stands. Keyshawn Harper, a couple of first half touchdowns, and the Tigers lead going into the locker room 22 14. To see your simple sale price, visit homelight.com slash simple today. Welcome back into Panther Stadium here at Prairie View AM. The Panthers trailing 22 to 14 as the marching storm on the field and ready to perform. And so are we. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green here with you. And you know what? Every week we come with something that's so interesting, so innovative. And it was thought up by you, Jay. It's your Give Me Five. Yeah. This is a Gimme Five show with Jay Walker and Tiffany. Yeah. You gonna have to give me five fingers on it. All right, how about right this? Now. Five fingers for the five things you Wait gotta know about Prairie View a and Coming from your boy Jay Walker. Number five, we're gonna see him right here for a minute. The band is called the marching storm you know how I like the marching the storm they're really good and i saw them i was like wow they're bigger than i remember them being one of the they're starting to move into one of those high-ranking band categories that i got there you know if you're gonna have a good band you know me number four has got to be 
the Black Foxes. So they've got the Storm, and then they've got the Black Foxes to go along with the Storm. So that's what you got to do in order to get it right. Number three, I think we've mentioned it a couple times, but around here, they don't call it Prairie View A&M. They call it The Hill. And if you don't know they call it The Hill, well, when you come into campus, they tell you, welcome to The Hill. And as much as I like all the different things you have with the campus aesthetically, it's all about what's in those buildings. And they've got one of the best architecture schools in the state of Texas. They get it done down here. So you're not just talking about agriculture, but I like the architecture school giving them a special shout out. Ah, look at you caring about those academics, those beautiful buildings that we see on campus. And so, Jay, the question is, who comes in at number one? Well, I'm a student athlete, right? You know that. But yeah. first and foremost, I'm you know, a football player. I'm here listening to football players. So let's give it up for my man. They have a Hall of Famer in Kenny Houston. Played football here at Prairie View A&M before he went on to become a legend in the National Football League. Inducted to the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1986. Oh, yeah, I got you, Big King. You're still the gold standard for Prairie View football. As we take a look at the Give Me Five list, who comes in on the bubble? Not, short. not quite making it. I'm going to go with Emmanuel Cleaver, the politician, the first African-American mayor of St. Louis, Missouri. So I'm going to give it up to him. And also the new era of football. The last time that Prairie View A&M won a football championship, they had a guy by the name of K.J. Black playing quarterback, so he's going to make my list QB to QB. That's my list. We'll talk about it. Hit us up at Black College Live. A little bit more from the number five on the list, the Marching Storm. They will take us to break. stage the UFC on ESPN plus always enjoy the band at halftime that's the marching storm on the field for Prairie View A&M as you say hello and welcome back in okay so Jay there have been some shakeups over the last couple of weeks some important games have been played so Jay's power rankings should be interesting this week there's, there's a shakeup and like I always say these are Jay's power rankings they're not tips they're not chores they're my power rankings, and I call like I see it. So that being said, let's get to the power rankings. Number five, Southern University. Undefeated in swag play, but they're yet to have that impressive victory they need to tell me that they're in the top three or four teams there. They've got an opportunity to prove that later on, but Dawson Odom's ball squad is doing enough to get by right now. I respect that, so I got Southern coming in at number five. Number four, they, they just keep winning. The record is impressive. They're six and one. But what's that statement they've got? Jimmy Robinson has emerged as one of the most dynamic weapons in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. But Bethune-Cookman, they continue to win, but they're not winning and dominating factor, uh, factor. So that's why I've got them coming in at an impressive number four. Number three. Whoa. Wait a, Wait a minute. minute. What happened? Woo. North Carolina a has been number one for a long time, all season long, but the Aggies went on the road, took a loss, and North Carolina a t is now the number three team in my HBCU power ranking. They're the defending black college football national champions. So then what happened, Jay? Uh, what happened was hey, they went on the road and they faced a very impressive number two squad, and that number two team is the Rattlers from Florida A&M haven't been ranked this high in a long time. Congratulations to Coach Willie Simmons as the Willennium continues down there in Tallahassee. And here's how the Rattlers pulled off the upset versus North Carolina a and Rashawn McKay, the backup quarterback, connects with Marcus Williams. And if you can believe it, Jay, both teams ranked in the top 25. And Spam, you coming in at number 23 in the FCS poll. Yeah, and, and that's good for the conference right there. Congratulations to them. And, the, you know, you have to think if it all plays out and they both continue to play like they're playing, they win the rest of their games, then fortunately maybe a team like uh, A&T can, you know, go a little bit further than what they need to do. So give them credit. A lot of people want to know why is Spam ranked behind A&T when they beat them. 
but A&T still has an impressive body of work. The non-conference victory versus uh, Elon to start off the season, and they've been that class act, but you got to give credit to the Rattlers making an appearance in the top 25 for the first time in the 10 years, I believe. Yes. So that's a good one. That being said, they're good, but they're not number one. <laughs> number so one, fun. I'm going to keep it down here in the SWAC. Ooh. I'm going to keep it in the SWAC. And A&T has been the school we've talked about, but quiet is kept. Fred McNair has had all corn playing football in dominating fashion all season long. They've got it going. They lose their quarterback, Noah Johnson. In steps Felix Harper. He's been named Offensive Player of the Week like three times in his four starts there. He's getting it done. They've got a powerhouse program down there on the reservation in Lorman, Mississippi. Alcorn State, to me, is the number one team in HBCU football right now. They are the reigning SWAC champions on the bubble. Comes in. Oh, my goodness. We haven't seen them in a while. Arkansas Pine Bluff. The last time I put them on the bubble, they went out there and got shellac. So now we're going to see if they can play good football with a little bit of a target on their back. I think Arkansas Pine Bluff is one of those teams that can have something to say about the SWAC championship game. If you're keeping it in the SWAC, I think everybody will look to Saturday in the undefeated going head-to-head -head in Southern and Alcorn State. Many people think that could be a preview of the SWAC championship. And what a game it was last year when Alcorn hosted Southern University for the SWAC championship. This year, everybody thought they would be on a collision course, and it's played out to be that way. This is going to be a fantastic regular season matchup, and the key is the defense. We talk about this game now here where we got a great offensive-minded team. Both Southern and Alcorn have championship-caliber defenses that give them an opportunity to compete on a weekly basis. This is going to be a fantastic football game. Toss it up. Who you got, Tiff? You going to call it? I'm not going to call it. <laughs> staying away from it. Just a reminder of the SWAC Championship December 7th here on ESPN. You more football to come when you come back. 05203. The drum majors from the marching storm getting down as we center it back on football 22 14 at the half and here's how we get here as you look back at that first half prairie view AM got on the board first as it was a tony mullins touchdown the prairie view AM special and that's how prairie view AM scored they score on explosive plays they have not had that long drive down the field but they've got so much firepower so they hit you with the big play just when you think you got them bottled up, the quick strike offense of Prairie View A&M makes you pay for running back sensation, Dewan A. Tucker, taking it to the house. 80 yards on that score, the longest offensive play for the Panthers this season. And then you turn it to Jackson State, who also answered opening on their first drive. Good job by Derek Ponder finding Crowell in the end zone for the score. And then they decide they're going to run the ball a little bit with Keyshawn Harper pushing the Panther defense out of the way. And once again, Harper, foot race to the edge, to the pylon, stretches for the score. A field goal added by the Tigers, and that's how they have the lead going into the second half. We'll see you on the other side. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by McDonald's. Thursday night selection from Prairie View A&M on the hill. John Hendrick on the road with a 22-14 lead. As we're just about set to start the second half, Eric Dooley and his group back out onto the field. And if you were a coach in each locker room, what was your message? Both sides, stop the pillars. The penalties are killing both teams. So whichever team can settle down and start playing between the whistles correctly will have the greatest chance of victory. And I think if you're Jackson State, keep that intensity that you started this game with. They came in here trying to intimidate Prairie View. They had some success in doing it. For Prairie View and them, you have to settle down Jalen Morton, your quarterback. He just looked rattled at times, made some ill-advised decisions, trying to get him going on track. Amari Martinez boots it to start this third quarter and into the hands of Keyshawn Harper who's responsible for a couple of scores and we'll see the Tigers 
come back out on the field to start this second half starting from their own 24 yard line first half stats pretty even on total yards sacks though you have to circle that one as Prairie View A&M was sacked four times they were able to get to the quarterback but those penalties you mentioned Jay really hampered both teams so Tigers starting with their worst field position of the game you know what Kamani Clark says it doesn't matter and the first play of the second half we see a penalty marker on the field play personal foul and to the face against the defense number 99 15 yard penalty from the end of the run first down take a look on the right side number 99 he's got uh the jersey and didn't realize he went to the uh haven't seen a call like that. No the hands to the face. You, you touched the actual hand. That one, there was a jersey in between the hand and the face mask. The handoff once again, and Kamani Clark picks up some more. Brought down by Kyron Harris. Good for six. And they're going to let him play some football. Whenever they let him play without the penalties, we see that Kamani Clark is that special type of runner. I mean, I would feed him. He seems to have the most pep in his step. The young freshman who emerged a week ago continues to impress with his running style and his vision. We mentioned coming off a career high, 171 yards last week as Jalen Harris wrapping him up. He's got moves. <laughs> He's got moves. I, I like the vision. And anytime you're running back, we give you the ball twice and you pick up nine yards, almost 10 yards. You got that forward lean. You talked about that lean and still really getting up to speed because he was cleared just the last week of camp for the Tigers and he's already making an impact especially now midway through the season with Jordan Johnson having gone down with injury along with Tyson Alexander for a couple of weeks Clark again continuing to move the pile gain positive yards and a good run on first down just pick up of a couple but moving forward and now you, you ask yourself do you have the patience as an offense to continue to force feed the run if you can play at this pace clock moving you have the lead running back getting positive yards when he touches it on touches the football do you have the patience to keep feeding him although only gain two trust that he can gain more if you continue to run the football And they go with the run game again, but smack by Darius Campbell. Campbell, the version for the Panthers of the Honey Badger, was right there to meet him. Oh, and that's a huge play. I mean, he just absolutely shoots the gap. And that's just a missed block by the tight end. They had the play design that they wanted, but number 85, Kylan Ritchie, absolutely did an ole block on Darius Campbell and allowed his running back to get trucked in the backfield. Fourth tackle for a loss for this Panthers defense and really starting to come into his own, a junior who has helped lead on the defensive side and then almost picked off right through the hands of Drake Cheatham. Cheatham already with two interceptions on the season, missed out on his third. More importantly, fourth down. Yeah, Cheatham has a number of pass breaks up and they put him in the right position, but he has to make this INT. That's a clean break pick that you have to come away with. Two interceptions on the season, but he's got five pass breakups already. And they said we need him to start coming up with interceptions and not just pass breakups. On the punt, Zach Gleaton gets it away. Line drive. And just run out of bounds. Jalen Harris was there. So who's going to come out yep, of court? I was just going to say, who do you start here Morton. in this second half? So now, do you think he's gotten the message? Because you start the game, then you go a little cold. Trazon Conley, the backup, comes in. How do you rebound as a quarterback? Well, I mean, that pine time has a way of making you clear your head real fast. So they put him on the pine for a little bit. Didn't have a great first half there. 
but just made a couple ill-advised throws, and now you realize he's a guy that can win this football game for you. Morton hands it off to Dewine Tucker, and Tucker brought down by Keontae Hampton. Remember, he sprung for an 80-yard score back in the first half. And if you give the ball to Tucker with daylight, then he definitely can win this football game for you. See, it doesn't take him long to go from zero to 60. It didn't take long for the Panthers to snap the ball. And again, Tucker running ahead, 18 yards on the last pickup, another first down, good for a dozen. And I like this. They're just basically handing the ball to Tucker and saying, you run to daylight. <laughs> Wherever you see a hole, you take advantage of it. Morton back for pass, completes it to Tristan Wallace. Wallace, we mentioned the Oregon transfer, just the second time he's been thrown to tonight. And they're trying to go up tempo right now. It's like the look that they're seeing from Jackson State defensively. But unfortunately, Christian Wallace kind of limpy getting to the sideline forces them to slow down their up tempo offense. They snap the ball quickly once again and up ahead. They go back to Tucker close to the first down. I think they're going to give it to him. So, again, steady dose of Dewanye Tucker. He will take a spell as Caleb Broach comes in for him. But the quick strike, the tempo offense that you're talking about, trying to get this offense jump-started here in the second half. Morton trying to take a shot, has a man, and Jared Scott was the intended receiver covered by C.J. Holmes. You're shaking your head, Jay. Did you like that decision or no? No, because I, I just didn't like because you lost a lot of offensive power power. Tristan Wallace is on the sideline. Dewanye Tucker's on the sideline. First down, you're coming out passing, and now you're second and 10. Well, you had some momentum going, but now you're playing catch up, and you basically force yourself to have to throw the ball for the rest of this uh, set of downs. And Morton able to get away, but not from Keontae Hampton. Keontae Hampton has been the guy on defense all over the field. And there he was once again. And he plays like a grown man, number 40, not afraid to mix it up. Keeps an eye on Morton the whole time, then able to make the tackle. Six foot two inch, 225 pound sophomore from West Point. Mississippi straight up ball player for this Jackson State defense fifth sack for the unit and once again coming at him hard Keontae Hampton once again make it six sacks for this defense I mean he's coming right up the middle timing up the snap count blown assignment number 71 Colby Lewis gets distracted on a stunt one of the easiest sacks Keontae Hampton's gonna have in his career. And you think about just how this Prairie View A&M drive started. They seem to be going quickly and moving, getting the ball down the field. And then all of a sudden, as you mentioned, just kind of stalled there. Good punt by Darborn, but it goes into the end zone for a touchback. Well, Keontae Hampton, three sacks on the night. The defense came ready to play. Visit simplysafe.com for a limited time offer. By McDonald's. Good times on the hill tonight. Swaction this Thursday night from Prairie View AM. The road team. Jackson State with the lead. Jalen Jones back in at quarterback. And Jones, who can try to beat you with his feet, Prairie View is all over it. The defense was right there. Trey Shot Smith with the sack. They know when Jones comes in the game, expect some type of running package. And so they just crowded the box, put one extra man in there that you couldn't block, and great job of surrounding the quarterback, swarming to the football. 
A nice tackle for a loss by Treshawn Smith, middle linebacker for Prairie View A&M. Leads the conference in tackles for a loss and correction there is a tackle for a loss and not a sack as Derek Ponder now back in. Ponder, who had an opportunity to run it and then just popped out of bounds by Story Jackson. A little indecision there. He was trying to see if there was anybody down the field and decided he was going to take it himself. Yeah, you know, and this is a nice legal hit. Rarely do you see a defensive back get an opportunity to take a shot like that on the quarterback, but Jackson, the outside linebacker slash nickel, got an opportunity to put a good pop on Derek Ponder. Third and long for the Tigers. Stepping up. And again, Ponder trying to go to the sideline and once more tripped up by Story Jackson. Good job by playing the field backer by Story Jackson. So off when you're an outside linebacker, you think about pursuit of the quarterback and trying to get him and you let wide receivers sneak in behind you. But Jackson was playing towards the field and stayed at home and able to make the tackle and force the punt from Jackson State. Quick three and out for the Tigers with Dewanye Tucker back on the return. And then a couple of penalty markers fly out. Illegal substitution against the defense. 12 men line up in formation. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Gleaton gets the punt away. And okay. fumbled, ball on the ground! And Jackson State able to recover it. Jay Sean Baker. So bobbled by Jalen Harris, hit him right in the bread basket, and then Baker comes in to recover the fumble. The rugby style kick. They snuck Dewanye Tucker back on one side, and. Jalen Harris focuses on the defensive player from Jackson State coming to make the tackle, and he just muffs it. And Jackson State comes up with the recovery and the football that keep their offense on the field. Frustrating for Eric Dooley as his defense forced a three and out. And then Harris unable to hold on to it. And what a night, though, for Jayshon Baker. Fumble recovery along with an interception. Now the Tigers hand it off to Kamani Clark, the true freshman, moving ahead. Good pickup of nine on first down. Keep, keep him in the game. <laughs> I mean, when I see Kamani Clark, and no offense to George Johnson and, and Keyshawn Harper, those guys, Kamani Clark seems to be that edge of your seat type runner. Every time he's in there with the football, you just got to get on the edge of your seat because you feel he can break a big play. They hand it off to Clark again, absorbs the hit and contact and still goes ahead for the first down and more. And Jay, you know, we featured the two running backs in the open for both teams in Kamani Clark and Dewanye Tucker. And we've seen when you give them the ball, exactly what they can Special do. Special things can happen. Ponder moving out to the right. And Ponder throws it up and nearly brought in, but deflected by Jalen Harris. The intended target was Crowell. Escaping out the pocket, that's one where you don't mind that. You're giving, you've got a one-on-one -on -one matchup. It's what you call the 50-50 ball. See if your big wide receiver can come down with it. Ball hit him in the hands. He almost came down with a great play. Crowell's a guy. You get him on that island. He's... Athletic enough to do some things to hurt you. Nice size, 6'2", 200 pounds, and extremely athletic. Ponder sees pressure in his face. The screen set up. They give it off to Harper Clark. Excuse me. 
from Trey Shot Smith once more in on the stop. A pickup of nine as Jackson State now in the red zone. Third and short. And Harper was met very quickly there with Story Jackson again. You have to see this. If, if you're Derek Ponder, there was no deep safety in the field at all. So they brought everybody down there, timing up a blitz. They're getting there closer to the line. They time it up. The snap count with the claps they were waiting for. But you had to anticipate that was coming because there was nobody in the middle of the field. They were bringing the blitz from every direction. And that's a great play by Story Jackson to blow it up and force the field goal attempt. Loss of four. Now fourth and five as Adrian Salazar on to attempt another 39-yard field goal. Hit it back in the first half to match his season long. The snap and whistles. The little game against the offense. Five-yard finish fourth down. Ouch, that hurts you because it backs up Salazar, who has only attempted two field goals of more than 40 yards this season. So now you're looking at a 44 yard field goal for Salazar. The kick is up. Does it have the leg? Yes, through the uprights and that's good for his season long now. So Adrian Salazar continuing to tack on some more insurance for the Tigers. Kick off your week eight NFL Sunday with ESPN and the ESPN app starting at 10 Eastern. Our Sunday night Sunday NFL countdown crew will have all the early breaking stories, injury updates and preview each game right up to kickoff. And then, of course, Monday night action hits the Miami Dolphins versus the Pittsburgh Steelers at 8 Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes. And of course, you can always find it on the app. Bernard Goodwater out of Dallas, Texas on the return and brought down just near the 23-yard line. Jackson State defense has been all over the field tonight, Jay. You have to give them credit. Going against this high-powered offense, they've managed to pressure the quarterback position for Prairie View a and can continue to pressure the pocket, get a number of sacks on Jalen Morgan, and this made a really good quarterback and more of look very average in that first half. The Panthers are going to need to figure out their pass protection against Jackson State because we've seen too many guys come in untouched to the quarterback. And some more laundry on the field tonight. And we came in talking about this high-powered, high-octane offense for Eric Dooley, second best in the FCS in terms of points per game at 37. And tonight, they've been limited to just 14 so far. And it's been the quick strike variety. So they're one of those offenses. They like to get into a rhythm, and they see what you have trouble defending, and they expose it. But the rhythm just hasn't been there, and they've relied solely on the big play. Dewanye Tucker is one of those players who comes up with big plays there. He stopped by Khalil Johnson. Short gain of two. And I do think if they can just figure out how to protect the quarterback position, then they can put some more points on the board. But right now, they've just missed assignments. They're falling for stunts. And up front, they just have not gotten the job done. Mullins in motion. And Morton looking to his left side the entire way, finds this man and then dropped by Xavier Johnson. Jay Sean Baker was in on the coverage. Got to make that catch. College football player, you got to make that catch. <laughs> Big play. I mean, secure the football when you get there. And once again, that's Deshaun Baker, number 14, the freshman with the swag. Even though he gets beat deep, doesn't give up on the play and able to Knock that ball out of there. A 
On third down, Morton, dangerous throw there to Jordan Jones, incomplete. And, and once again, you have to make that catch. He throws a strike. Jalen Morton throws a strike, secure the football. And this is where you want it. Secure it. Don't let the defensive back strip it on your way to the ground. That's what they're taught to do. Right now, the receiving and, and tight ends from Prairie View A&M not helping out their quarterback. Eric Dooley will have to find something that he can muster up to get anything going against this Tigers defense on fourth down. The punt by Caleb Darborn. Newman content to watch it bounce. And just at the 26 yard line, we'll see the Tigers come out on offense. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Question is, who's in? You look at a team like Clemson as a for instance, as we're back here. Derek Ponder on that first down run. A good pickup for Ponder. Rare that he calls his number, but he has the ability to run, Jay. And they're hitting him with a dose of their own met medicine. You know, Prairie View and m famous for that run pass option with the throw down the field. Jackson State calls the exact same play, and Ponder decides to keep it. Clark on the carry, and Jason Dumas dragging him down. And I see Jason Dumas reminds me of a guy that played at Howard by the name of Marcus Douglas. Marcus Douglas, a little undersized to be an interior defensive lineman, but had the hands and went on to play a number of years in the National Football League. And they stopped calling him an undersized defensive tackle <laughs> after he earned that money. Ponder is not in sync with D.D. Bowie, the intended target. You go back to a guy like Jason Dumas standing at five foot ten. I mean, certainly he could pick up the eyes of some NFL scouts as several have been on campus to take a look at a few players, Jeremy Morton, DeWanye Tucker among them. Yeah, and, you know, the thing about Dumas, the upside, just a sophomore, so he comes in, you know, solid. He'll, he's going to leave about 270 pounds by the time he's done playing, and if he keeps his quickness along with his hand technique and the type of quality person that he is, high character guy. I don't know any teams that are turning down those type players. Wrapped up by Story Jackson, and again, Jason Dumas wants more in on that play. And watch him from his defensive end position. We've seen him play outside, but watch him. He's playing at the top of the line, and watch him shoot down the gap and find the ball. Shoot down the gap, find the ball, make the hit, disrupt the play. And that shows you the ability to go inside and outside why Jason Dumas, as they say, he's that dude. They got to update those numbers. He's not 230 anymore. <laughs> that was when he was a freshman coming <laughs> on campus. The great story offered a kidney to his father. So you talk about the selfless individual as well. Third and 12 for Derek Ponder and the Tigers gets it away. And the pass complete to Warren Newman just short of the first down. Decision time here. And we we'll always tell you, a decision like this be made when you're a yard short, yard and a half short, and your head coach is a former defensive coordinator. <laughs> you know what you're going to do? You're going to punt the football. Now, I would watch the fake in this instance here. But there's nothing about it up by 11 that tells you roll the dice. And this one just goes out of bounds. Well, Jay, we're seeing two swag teams go head to head tonight. That'll be the case on Saturday as well from Birmingham, the Magic City Classic. Alabama AM taking on Alabama State. Uh, we'll be there. Yeah, you see the numbers, you know, and they say there, you know, if you just kind of take a look at 200,000 participants. I've been telling everybody for years. The first year I saw it, I couldn't believe what I was looking at. Yeah. I said, how did I not know about this? And now it's become the biggest HBCU game in the country. And we're going to televise it. If you haven't been there, you need to go. You're missing out. 
Jalen Morton still on his feet. Strong run from the fifth year senior quarterback, Jakaiser Glass, bringing him down. That's good for a first down. And sometimes, I hate to say this as a quarterback, sometimes when you get hit pretty hard, it shakes you up and you start to play a little bit better. Tigers showing blitz and tough snap to handle. And Moore, Morton barely cut back on that ball. I mean, this, take a look at the snap. I mean, that's high. You know, maybe he comes down with that, but you're talking about Morton, six foot four inches tall. Guards have missed the, the spot by a lot. Loss of 13. Morton got it out, and again, Man. another drop. Tony Mullins usually sure handed for this group. And once more, drop pass for the Panthers. And, and this is why you like Morton. On a rope, accurately thrown ball. I mean, he gets rid of that ball in a hurry. It gets to the receiver in a hurry. You see the big arm, the mobility, but the wide receiver doesn't help him out. Another drop ball. Morton launches it down the sideline in double coverage. Jay Sean Baker was there, was trying to get his second pick of the game. And a Jackson State player is down on the far side. I mean, two white jerseys coming over trying to make a play. And And you saw a collision there between Jay Sean Baker and Tanoa Alex on the way down. And this has got to frustrate you if you are Eric Dooley, former wide receiver, played under the great Eddie Robinson at Grambling State, went on to graduate from Southern University. But working with these receivers, trying to find ways, you don't just think about that play, but the drop passes tonight that stall your offense. Drop passes, penalties, self-inflicted, bad snaps, ineligible linemen downfield. And you know, when we talked to him, one thing that he did mention to us, we talked to him uh, yesterday and also today in pregame, this team needs the more discipline. And the discipline is starting to show up in things like this. And undisciplined football teams are not championship football teams. And that's what they're shooting for here. But they need more discipline and it shows up on game day. Fair catch quickly from Warren Newman. And if both of these programs are trying to get to that championship level, you think about Prairie View a &M, last swag title came back in, you know, 2009. And then they saw an era where they didn't come across a lot of wins. Willie Simmons comes through, has a few winning seasons. Then Eric Dooley comes and takes over and they're one and one, excuse me, they're two and two in the conference. So they've, they've got a chance. They've got a shot, but they don't control their own destiny. We'll have to see what happens with Southern. Remember, they played them tight, too, yep. and losing on the road in Baton Rouge. Empty backfield as Harper moved out. And the completion to number 10, Ramit Wallace. And Wallace with a great pickup and continuing to move ahead. First down from Ramik Wallace. Talk about some yak. <laughs> uh, but I mean, take a look after the contact with the spin moving. Hey, you're allowed to do this. Look at Big 75 coming there and move the pile. And Big number 51 as well, Cedric Dunbar. <laughs> A rip jersey there. Kenneth Mouton. That's big number 75. 6'5", 350 listed for the junior out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Winding down in this third quarter. Tigers QB. Flanks it out quickly to Terrell Kennedy. Kennedy. And after the play, penalty marker comes down.
personal foul. Face mask. Defense, number 24. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's on Reggie Stubblefield, so that's how we'll end the third quarter. The teams will flip fields and talk it over as we head to the final period in this one from the hill. We are the SWAC. Our heritage lifts us to great heights because my history is forged by trailblazers that motivates me today. To Untimed down here, back from Panther Stadium, Jackson State. We'll get another crack at it. On this untimed down. And brought down by the Panthers defense. A swell of players along with Story Jackson in on the action. So now, that will do it for the third quarter. Back for fourth quarter action when you return. 2 1 or go to betterbrella.com. That's 1 800 346 8021 or order online at betterbrella.com. Fourth quarter just about to start. 25 14, Jackson State with the advantage here from Panther Stadium. It's been a fun one so far, minus the penalties, I would say. If Jay you Walker, like, if you like colors. Green. If, you like, <laughs> if you like the color yellow, yellow. more specifically. <laughs> if you don't mind doing a little laundry, certainly you've had a lot of it tonight. Derek Ponder deciding to tuck it and run, and Treshad Smith brings him down. Good for four. For Pervier and them on defense, you, you got to look at the scoreboard. You're down by 11. Keep them to a field goal that's 14 points. That's still the two scores you were going to need with your quick strike offense. Give them a chance. So right now they've got to be thinking we can bend, but we can't break. We've got to stop Jackson State from getting the first down and force them to go for a field goal try. And third and 13 and wrapped up by number 98, Ronald Collins out of nearby Houston, Texas. It just kept, I thought it was a Decent pocket with the step up, but they continued the pursuit in number 75, Kenneth Mouton. When he missed his block, there was nowhere else for Ponder to go. That's a big play because you take him out of field goal range, I think. Yep. Exactly what I was thinking. And, and Jay, you know, that's a stop that Prairie View AM needs. It would be a 54 yard field goal if they were to attempt it instead. Zach Gleaton trots on. They don't want to press their luck already. The specialist of the week out of the swag, Adrian Salazar, knocked through a couple of field goals tonight. And Gleaton remembered it a good job of pinning the Panthers deep earlier in this ball game. Can he do it again? Against the offense. Five-yard penalty. Delay a game on Jackson State. They decline it. Yep. You know, Jackson State's taking a delay a game, thinking five more yards back gives our punter leading a little bit more room to work with. Good job declining the penalty. Tough snap handled by Leeton. Goes out of bounds right around the 14 yard line. So we saw Dewanye Tucker 
have some success in that first half, but when you look at the last seven drives for the Panthers offense, six punts and one INT for the second ranked offense in FCS, it makes you scratch your head a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a head scratcher, but they've struggled protecting the, the quarterback. And then the last drive we saw coming out of halftime, it's been the drops. The wide receivers have not held on to the football. Can they hold on here? Jalen Morton in the hands of his wide receiver down the sideline. And Jared Scott is slow to get up after that reception. And I'll tell you what. You would like to have a little bit more trajectory on this throw, but he throws it on the money. I mean, that is in stride. Run out there, catch it. You don't have to break stride. That's a big-time throw from Jalen Morton. You know, they have the term arm talent. Yeah. He's got a very talented arm. He can deliver the ball downfield accurately with velocity. And Morton decides to call his own number. Morton with the first down. So after the 52 yard completion, Morton goes ahead for another 11. I'd still be careful calling that play because for the ineligible man downfield, mm -hmm. in that case, because Morton decided to run it, he took that call out of the referee's hands. But I'm going Tucker. I'm giving the ball to Tucker on the edge here. He averages about seven yards per carry coming into tonight's contest. Instead, they elect to throw it. Jordan Jones, the intended stop, target. Stop, yeah. I got cut you off. Yeah. They don't elect to throw it. Jalen mm -hmm. Morton elects to throw it. <laughs> That's that run pass option. Give the ball to the best running back in your conference. He tries to do too much, pulls the ball, the defense baits him, there's nothing there. And once again, you hear me say my pet peeve, First down incompletions are drive killers. Sorry, I'll get off my high horse, but. This time, they hand it off to Tucker, and Tucker is able to get yards and more. Tucker still Finish. has a for the touchdown. Finish the run. That's how you finish the run. A diminutive stature of five foot five. And he continues to power ahead. Plays bigger than he is. The balance. It's all about the balance. He sees daylight, gets vision, goes sideways, but keeps the legs going. And great runners finish great runs. And Dewanye Tucker, I said it before, he is the Tariq Cohen of the swag. The league's leading rusher. And bringing his team within four, four plays, 85 yards, capped off by a Dewanye Tucker run. Keep beating your boy to rock. Mom was, yeah. Dewanye Tucker, an outstanding football player and student for this Prairie View A&M team. And they're within four after his 22-yard touchdown run. Coach Dooley says he's the heartbeat of this team. And he showed why on that last run. Keyshawn Harper tripped up near the 15-yard line. And now Dewanye Tucker is fired up on the sideline. We'll see how that ignites his defense. As you see the numbers tonight for Dewanye Tucker will pass his season average of 100 yards per game. He's got 134 tonight. And a couple of weeks ago, he was leading the nation in yards per carry. That went down a little bit. Well, it's going back up now. Over 11 yards per carry, per touch. And he's probably not done. They're gonna need some more from him if they wanna get the victory tonight. Just over 12 minutes to go. Jackson State with their worst starting field position of the night. 
Honda rolling out a couple of black jerseys there and brought down ball come loose. And was he down on the ground? Well, this is the right call. They, they kind of let it play out, and then you will see with the replay. Mm -hmm. And replay can go and overturn it. So the official's not going to blow the whistle. They'll wait to see what replay does, and he's down. Yeah. The ball popped out, looked like, after he was down. So second and 11. And Ponder, the RPO, Jason Dumas is the dude that's right there. One-on-one, -on -one, Dumas is going to win his matchups. And he's been a problem for him all night. When they move him to the inside, he disrupts in the run game, and then they put him at defensive end in passing situations. Four for 13 tonight on third down. Jackson State. And a drop pass from Warren Newman. And now fourth down. And this should give the Panthers good field position with the momentum after that scoring drive. Yeah, momentum is the key. The fans have gotten into it. The band's getting it going. And the defense played at an intense level that last series. And it's gut check time for Coach John Hendricks football squad. Tony Mullins just inside the 50. Goes across midfield. Good punt by Zach Leeton. And then it bounces out of bounds. So I think your recipe would probably be simple, Jay. One. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, Dewanye Tucker, and you have to have a conversation with Jalen Moore. You don't want to handcuff him so much, but you want him to realize when we call these run pass options, you have to give me a really good reason why you don't run the ball first. The way Dewanye Tucker's feeling it, keep the ball in his hands as much as possible. Dewanye Tucker, here he goes, just near midfield. And you know what? He's a guy that's just kind of slippery, you know, did, did when you, you look at him. Did you see him run underneath yeah. an arm tackle? I mean, that's using your size and your advantage. You're going to be a five foot five inch running back. Watch this. They think they've got him down. He sees the would be tackling. He goes underneath it and picks up a couple more yards. Tucker to the right of Morton. Three right receivers. They hand it off. To Tucker again and you know that they're gonna be spying in on Dewanye Tucker as a penalty marker is out a little formation against the defense five players in the backfield Five it's y'all penalty. <laughs> Replay. Second down. Been a long night. Even the, <laughs> even the referees get tired. He called a legal formation <laughs> against the defense but you see here, you got to have one more person. None, nobody out of these three gets up on the line of scrimmage. That's a no-no. You can't have that. Brings up second and nine. And Morton keeping it, trying to get to the outside and really nowhere to go. Wrapped up by Dimitri Vance. Now third down again. Why don't you give the ball to number one? Yeah. I mean, make, they have not shown they can stop Tucker. Hand the ball off. And Tucker goes to the sideline on this third down. Caleb Broach now in the backfield, and that's a question mark that we've seen a couple times tonight where Tucker has gone to the sidelines. He's they're, banged up a little bit early. They're blitzing him. Morton trying to go over the top. The speedy Tony Mullins is there. What a throw after a big time hit on the blitz. That's one of the best throws you will see in college football this week. Tony Mullins, the walk on who has helped to lead the way.
with the 54-yard reception and then a flag on the play. Jalen Morton's on the ground. They brought a free safety blitz, and Close he the stood in the pocket. Open the passer against the defense, number 98. Fairview has elected to take the foul on the kickoff, 15 yards. And Morton is still down. Let's take a look at that hit again. I mean, he knows that the blitz is coming. He can't hold on to it for so long. And that's just a low, kind of a cheap shot by the defensive lineman crawling at his legs. But that being the case, he threw that ball on the M-O-N-E-Y. That's a dime. And that's one of the reasons why NFL scouts are taking a look at him. As Morton has got the measurables that you want, 6'4", 226, and he's helped to the sideline as Martinez on to attempt the extra point to try to give the Panthers a three-point lead. Well, Tony Mullins, who has been a pleasant surprise for this Panthers offense. You see the former high school running back, his speed, he gets over the top. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. Outside of H-Town here on the hill, Prairie View, Texas, Eric Dooley sees his team up by three late here, but the question is, will Jalen Morton return? He went into the tent after taking a huge hit. Yeah, and that's gonna be the key, and uh, one of the best throws you will see. And that, that's a big time throw, that was a perfect throw. And Prairie View has fought back behind the big plays and taken the lead. That's exactly what they do, a quick strike offense. Now they'll put it in the hands of their defense to see if they can come up with another stop here. And I think the last time the defense was on the field was probably the most inspired they've played in this football game. So if they can keep that momentum, they've managed to get to the quarterback, collapse the pocket, and make some plays. And Starting to feel for the first time in a long time, Derek Ponder, he's under some pressure to deliver for this Jackson State offense. Time of possession heavily favored to Jackson State. Harper not able to get outside, brought down by face Big mask. Ronald Collins. And the face mask likely called as the penalty marker is out. Having to contain one of the oh, Prairie wow, View the a personal coaches foul. and then unsportsmanlike conduct on a coach. We got personal foul. Face mask against the defense. Out of the play. Personal foul. Unsportsmanlike conduct against Prairie View defense. First down. <laughs> he didn't say defensive coordinator. <laughs> Should have called him out on that one. And let's see. He's right. That's the jersey. Yeah. That, oh, wow. That was the jersey. And coach comes on the field, and that's what, that's going to get your flag when you come that far out. I mean, if, even if you're a head coach, you may not get away with that. You've got to keep your composure there in this type of football game. Three point game. You give another team 15 extra yards. Yes, it was a bad call, but your team follows you. You can't do that. Those two penalties gifted Jackson State 30 yards. Yes. <laughs> now they find themselves across midfield in Prairie View AM territory. Ponder with the interception. Jalen Harris is there once again. He had big games against Southern and Grambling, and now his third INT of the season. Jumped the wide side throw and got a beat on it, making up for a fumble he had earlier as a punt returner. Does a good job of jumping the route, 
That's a big time throw. You have to have a big arm in order to get it. Harris takes advantage of being the field cornerback and comes away with the big interception for the Panthers. Just think the adversity that they had just faced. They gave up 30 yards and then come up with a big play. And for the first time tonight, we've seen a statement by this defense from Prairie View A&M. And that was a big play. Got the stop. They needed it. But they're not out of the woods yet. Trazon Connolly, we saw him back in the first half. Late in the second quarter, the handoff to Dewanye Tucker. The recipe, as we mentioned, pretty simple in your eyes, Jay. Brought down by Keontae Hampton. Yeah, and Jackson State needs to make the adjustment. Morton's out of the game. They've got Conley in. They're going to try and keep giving the ball to Tucker. You have to bring that safety down in the box and get that eighth guy close to the line of scrimmage to try and stop Prairie View from just running the ball with Tucker. They're bringing pressure up front. Tucker showing good vision. Picks up a few. Khalil Johnson, the four-year starter, in on the stop. And they run a three-down lineman scheme, right? So you've got to make it obvious. Look at the number of bodies on the line of scrimmage. That looks intimidating. That's only five guys. Give me an offensive line. I'll take that. If I can get five on five and the next secondary guys are five yards off the ball, they'll take that. Jackson State's got to be willing to come up and crowd that line of scrimmage to win the number count battle. Third and two. Mullins in motion. They look to pass and covered him. On the coverage was Rashad Jenkins, but how about Jordan Jones coming up with it, holding on to the football and moving the chains? And yeah, that's the redemption there. We saw a similar pass earlier where he allowed the defensive back to come in and dislodge the football, strip him from it. But this right here, this is a nice catch. This ball was thrown behind him a little bit. The strong hands able to secure the football against the defense of Rashad Jenkins for the first down. Trying to find Mullins again, and Mullins had the step behind the defense and just slightly overthrown. And that's where the difference of quarterbacks are. You know, Morton's got that arm to make that throw a little bit easier, and Conley's got a nice arm, but doesn't have the timing to complete that pass. Trazon Connolly out of Duncanville. Texas and Mullins will catch a breather. Meanwhile, Duane Tucker, 14 carries, 147 yards and two touchdowns. And they hand it off to their running back. And Tucker picks up about four. He was close to breaking that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When he accelerates, he can get from zero to 60 in a hurry. I think more importantly when you're looking on this drive too, Jay, is the fact that Prairie View A&M is converting and then winding down that clock some more, eating up as much time as they can, trying to sustain that long drive that they've been looking for. We'll see what they do here on third and six. They bring the house. The pressure is there and wrapped up by a ton of white jerseys as Connolly goes down. Keontae Hampton. We can't call his name enough for that Tigers defense. And he comes up limping. Hey, this jailbreak blitz. Bring everybody. Nobody's dropping. We're going to get to the quarterback. And that just happened where Prairie View A&M called a deep downfield throw play selection. And that's the wrong play to have called against that type of blitz. You see Hampton had to be helped off by his teammates as he gimps to the bench. We we'll see if Darborn can pin him. And this one takes a favorable Panthers bounce inside the 10-yard line. Spotted at the five. 
So great job on the punt from the Panthers. They hold tight to the lead. Now and get up to $700 off the new iPhones. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's. Good aerial shot of H Town. Oh, Tiffany, coming, I've been, I've been down. I know you've been for waiting you to show for that this. shot all night. <laughs> okay, we're just about an hour outside of Houston. Last night, game two of the World Series. My match shut the city yeah, down. Yeah, they clobbered that big seventh inning, and yeah. they have a two nothing lead over the Astros. Keyshawn Harper with the big lead up ahead. Good blocking and continuing to go. But a flag on the field, and that one will likely come back. Harper knows it. Doing the run. Personal foul. Blind side block against the offense, number five. At the distance to the goal. Replay, first down. They're just not getting the message. That's D.D. Bowie, the wide receiver. And he comes in and, I mean, that, that's, we've seen more vicious than that. But they're making it clear. They want you to push that guy down. If you turn that shoulder on a defenseless player, the defenseless is somebody that does not see you coming, they're going to flag you. And it's for player safety but they've been calling it very tight here tonight. In this fourth quarter, Jackson State has only seen it negative yards on offense. They'll see if they can move the ball forward. Jalen Jones at the quarterback handoff. Once again, to Keyshawn Harper trying to move to the outside. And they're making the change from Derek Ponder going with Jalen Jones. Now, he is the threat to run. He's the home run hitter running the ball. Maybe they feel like we're going to have to run the football in order to win this game. But a little surprising, at this point in the game, you go with Jones. And Jones keeps it himself. And again, if you're a Prairie View defender, you know that there's a good likelihood that Jalen Jones, number four, is going to run. So are you appreciating the fact that you're seeing him on the field instead of Ponder, who can pick you apart in the passing game? Yeah. You know, what you have to do as a defensive back, don't rest. you got to play your coverage because the defensive coordinator is probably going to bring an extra person into the box for run support. Don't fall for the okie doke. Harper once again bouncing to the outside first down and then he's pushed out But again Keyshawn Harper now will change up to Kamani Clark what we've seen tonight. That's good for 17 We've yeah. seen them spend share time in the backfield Yeah, And they're winning that matchup over on the left side of the offensive lines where we've seen them have success running behind Amari Ketchings and Jalen Jones the left tackle <laughs> not the quarterback <laughs> High snap handled, and again, Harper, left number side. 22 called that left side. They're going to continue to go there. That's where, you, like you said, they've had great success. Number 22, Derek Cheatham on the other side, bringing them down. Yeah, so they found that matchup that they like there. Jalen Jones, number 65, the tackle, and Amari Ketchings winning their lineups on that left side for Jackson State, picking up big chunks of yardage. And again, you don't get a break because Kamani Clark is in the backfield. Have to get to the 50 to pick up the first down. Jones decides to do it himself. But a flag is out. Illegal formation against the offense. Five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Replay down. All right, they say you got five in the backfield. One, two, three, four, five. 
That's not a difficult call at all. And you take a second and short situation, second and one now becomes second and five, a little bit more of a challenge when you've got the running quarterback in the game compared to a throwing quarterback. And off to Kamani Clark, and Kamani Clark, just like that, can eat up a bunch of yards in a one carry. Left side runs. Once again, the holes are there for the left side, so you have to make an adjustment if you're Prairie View a and because Jackson State has found some matchups that they like. Injured Prairie View player down, Drake Cheatham, number 22, the free safety. We'll step aside here from Prairie View. Eric Dooley said this week that he was searching for an identity for his defense. Defensive coordinator Heron Miller said, you know what? We're coming into our own and we're starting to find it. We'll see how this defense holds up here with just over two minutes to go in Jackson State driving. First pass of this drive, Jalen Jones trying to take his time and throws it away. And the first down incompletion once again. So now you're basically gonna have to decide are you gonna throw the football for the rest of the set of downs with Jones in there? But you had success running the football to that left side. I don't know why you go away from that. Well, before that pass, you had five plays all on the ground that picked up 49 yards. The adjustment we've seen Prairie View make, they moved Dumas over to that left side. And they hand it off to Keyshawn Harper, who gets a good run on second down. Pickup of eight. That'll bring up third and short. And we'll see if Jackson State has the juice. They had it last week. They won in overtime. A lot of time ticking off this clock, trailing by three. Harper, again, finding a good hole and moves the sticks. So Jackson State has all three timeouts. And they're just taking their time here. Think about this, Jay. This drive started with about five and a half to go. They're milking the clock. They're getting good runs. Moving ahead here, Jones. And a false start, and I'll push him back. Well, just before. <laughs> now things will get interesting. First down play selection. I think you have to run the ball. Jalen Jones hasn't necessarily shown you he's going to be an effective passer in this game. Oh. John Hendrick, we mentioned in his first season as the head coach, wanting to see what his team could do here with under a minute to go. And Hendrick, awaiting the call as we are. Now, did they call a timeout after the penalty? False start. Offense number 60. Jack State has elected to take a timeout to avoid the 10 second runoff. So, if you're Ron Dickerson Jr., what are you drawing up here 
knowing that, you know, you've got Adrian Salazar, who's been successful tonight, and a couple of field goals could tie it, but you want to walk away with the win. Yeah, and you're not in his range right now. Yeah. And I think you feel comfortable with Salazar. And they've got to pick up another 8 to 10 yards. So, so, so knowing that, you know, you still want to try and run the football. You got down here on this drive running the football. Unless they give you a sellout look, then I'm going to go ahead and run the football. Now, sellout look means I'm counting. I'm counting the number of safeties. And if the safeties are back 10 yards off the ball, then you challenge your offensive line to run the football and pick up yardage. And you see the two safeties right there on the 25-yard line? Oh, they're playing back, so you, you run the football in the situation. Jalen Jones tucks it and waits for his blockers, springs to the outside. And that's how an athletic dual-threat quarterback like Jalen Jones can hurt you. It wasn't there. They had him bottled in, but he saw a crease in number 22. Drake Cheatham came down with a little bit of a poor angle, and Jalen Jones outran him to the corner, and now... The Tigers are in field goal range. And credit Kenneth Mouton with the great block up ahead. Tenth play of this drive. Jones tried to go outside again this time. Jason Dumas wasn't fooled. So Jackson State spins another timeout. And this is Dumas just shooting the gap. Well, tonight after the MLS Western Conference semi between LAFC and the Lake Galaxy, we'll stay in LA for Sports Center with Stan and Neil. Keyshawn Johnson joins the show to break down Kirk Cousins' matchup with his former team, Washington. Plus, Tim Leckler takes a closer look at Harden Westbrook's debut against Giannis and the Bucks. All right, Jay. Coming out of the timeout, second and 14. Jalen Jones, you know he's a dual threat. You've had success running the ball. What's your play selection like? Offensively, I'm still giving them those same type of reads. Mm -hmm. Hand the ball off to the running back if you can. If you have to keep it, just don't lose any more yards. You know, they shot the gap that last one. You don't want to tackle for a loss right here. Empty backfield, interesting. Wrong. Tried to pull him in and Jones moving ahead. Jones says, let's hurry up, let's get to the line. It's third and four inside the red zone. Tigers have a man and just dropped by Terrell Kennedy. It was there. Yeah, but, but that was the, the management of it. Why you're in a hurry? When you're in that situation, it's third down. So if you don't have a completed pass, you got to kick the field goal now. So now you have to kick the field goal. I thought he was in a rush instead of settle down, get your best play called. You have a timeout rather than rush in a hurry and come up with an incompletion. Now you basically take yourself away from a chance to win it. You have to hope to make this kick to go to overtime. So Salazar, who has already made a couple of field goals tonight, in addition to a career long, we'll have to think about it just a little bit longer as Prairie View AM spends a timeout. Last weekend in Itabina, this is the field goal that helped the Tigers take down Mississippi Valley State. I'd say anytime you're talking about overtime football and I'm just going to say FCS in general, relying on special teams, <laughs> not not the position you want to be in. You want to win it with your offense on the field, but right now they need Salazar, who's had a good night kicking the ball tonight, minus a missed extra point. Yep. Salazar, the senior out of Charlotte, North Carolina, on to attempt a 31-yard field goal. And again... Dooley trying to ice him with another timeout. Both teams have one remaining. Think about it a little bit more, son, he says.
Didn't Lack. look because they came out from the sideline a little lackadaisical, like they never really set up. So they knew they were going to call timeout. Look at Salazar out there on the field by himself, away from his team. If that's his routine, you've heard me say it before. Kickers are a little bit quirky bunch. And what's running through your mind if you're Adrian Salazar? Last weekend, you were the hero. You won it for your team in overtime. Now you have a chance to tie this ball game and give your chance, your team a chance to at least get into the extra period. Brevy does have another timeout. The kick is up. And it's good. Tie ball game. Adrian Salazar has been money tonight on the field goal attempts. This one to not it at 28 all. And you would not have known that coming into tonight's contest, he was just four of ten on field goal attempts. But when they needed it, he came through. That was a good drive by. Jackson State to tie up this football game with 16 seconds left. Jackson State, one of those programs we mentioned, the great tradition, they saw a lot of wins, they've seen a lot of success, and their fans travel along with them, making the trip from Jackson. We saw a couple of blue and white shirts in the stands. There they are. This one obviously not over yet, still 16 seconds Remaining, Bernard Goodwater back to return it. And a little dribbler Whoa. on the side. And oh, that was dangerous. Wide and it's whistled Whoa. dead. Oh, that's a very risky onside kick. Because now. Prairie View still has a, a timeout. Long pass and a timeout. They're going for a game-winning field goal. He must have called his own number. Why wow. try that? It plays right into the hands of Prairie View a and A mistake there from Salazar, given the fact we talked about this is a quick strike offense. They can score in explosive plays in a hurry. Yes, I mean, you're, you you throw the jump ball, you go for the defensive pass yeah. interference. There's so many things that can get you in the field goal range. Now, Martinez, a season-long 36 yards. Let me also temper that by saying Drazon Connolly, the backup quarterback, as Jalen Martin, the start, Morton, excuse me, the starter, Went down with an injury earlier this quarter. Here comes a blitz. Godley has a man. Oh, it's just dropped right off the fingertips of Travis O'Connor. Travis O'Connor, you, you have to come down with this football. That's not one hand catch. I think he saw it late. He went, he saw that ball late. He was open. I'd like to see a better throw from Conley, but wow, Jackson State dodged one. I bet you they won't <laughs> blitz this play. <laughs> a three-man front. Playing the protection, going along the right side again. And double coverage. And C.J. Holmes' helmet popped up, popped off rather. Dwayne Pickett coming up, grabbing his back. And Xavier Johnson was the intended target. So a man down, five seconds, likely the last play in regulation, barring a penalty. Predetermined where he was going with the football versus a cover two. Nothing tells you that this is where you throw the ball. And you saw Dwayne Pickett come over. A little friendly fire over there on the sideline. Right 
Now you just now you just tell everybody you go for this is Hail Mary formation. So you line up and just make a shot at the end zone with five seconds. You can only have time for one play. And if you're Travis O'Connor, you got to be playing that back in your head. Oh, you got to erase it. But there, there it was. He was open and just missed it. And and don't forget that Trayson Connolly has a guy by the name of Tristan Wallace. <laughs> I mean, but this is a play they're going to be thinking about. I mean, he, he sees it. I mean, he doesn't see it. He must have lost it in the lights because that's not the effort you're going to have in that situation. But he was wishing a guy like Tristan Wallace was out on the field right now. Yeah, they've lost some weapons. Wallace has been on the sideline ever since we saw him limp off the field earlier. Been a physical contest out there. But one guy that we know can get down the field in a hurry, though, is 19, Tony Mullins. If you get any type of one-on-one -on -one matchup with him, but you have to think Jackson State's going to play their preview defense. And the key with getting off a good Hail Mary is the offensive line giving them time to allow the wide receivers to run, in this case, 45 yards down the field. Connolly does not have time. And that Jackson State defense and Keontae Hampton has been all over the place. That's the end of regulation, and we're headed to OT. Uh, what you have to do here, take a deep drop, but he steps up too soon. Should have taken a deeper drop. Then you can step up and let it go. You're not stepping up to try and run. Overtime is coming your way from Prairie View. Come back with us to the hill. Tailgate like a pro. GMC. Overtime from the Lone Star State. 28 all between Jackson State and Prairie View A&M. Look, both teams will possess the ball in the overtime period you play it straight for the first two if you make it to a third you have to go for two this could get interesting as the coin toss now at midfield and you see that jalen morton out of pads he goes down and he's there on the coin toss trazon Connolly will have to lead this offense if prairie view a and m is able to walk away with the win Derek ponder Going back to the sideline for Jackson State and Prairie View a and What are you thinking? Yeah, well, quarterback. We know the quarterback's going to be for Prairie View a and but for Jackson State, who do you go with the quarterback? Do you go with Jalen Jones, who led you on the drive? They got you in position for the game-winning field goal, or do you go with, but he's a little bit limited because he hasn't completed a pass in this game, or do you go with Derek Ponder? We will see after this Prairie View and m possession. They will get to go first here in OT. And you have to get Dewanye Tucker touches. You have to. And I know unless they absolutely take him away from you, he's been the effective ball carrier all night, as good as advertised. And if you're Jackson State, I'm surrounding the box. I'm going to dare the backup quarterback to complete a pass against me. I'm going to play man to man coverage like they're lined up to do. And I'm not going to let Tucker get me. Connolly up ahead for about four yards on first down, brought down by Justin Reagan. He lost his shoe in the process, slips it back on. And a Jackson State player is slow to get to the sideline. Is can't see the number just yet, but trainers out there to attend to. And so, positive yardage on first down. They elect to run it. Go away from Dewanye Tucker. You think everybody's expecting Tucker to get the ball? Yeah. Yeah, and you know, and 
if they expect Tucker to get the ball, then the quarterback becomes the one guy that they don't account for in the running game. So maybe an opportunity. Look at that. Ten yards of carry. Yeah, he came in averaging just over seven. Now he's up to ten yards per carry. As Jamani, excuse me, C.J. Anderson was yeah. the injured Tiger That's down. Big. Yeah. That's big. He, he's their best defensive lineman overall package. And number 44, Vincent McIntosh. The nose tackles had a good job, good night tonight, stuff in the run. But C.J. Anderson, he's the one that makes his D-line go. And Tucker gets it and really nowhere to go. Vincent McIntosh is, is pumped up. So now third down after that pickup of one. And uh, just tough for me that when they bring out your best weapon, you put them on the sideline in a crucial situation like this. Now, they did mention that Broach is better in pass protection, but that kind of tips your hand knowing, all right, when Broach is in there, we know they're not going to run. They're probably going to pass the football. Let's see if the freshman Trazon Connolly can come up with the catch with the play. And the Panthers are going to talk it over, spending a timeout. Well, TJ returns from his Achilles injury and is back for NFL primetime with Boomer Sunday at 7:30 Eastern, only on ESPN Plus. They'll have all the highlights and breakdowns from the day's games with updates after the Sunday night and Monday night games. Scott Van Pelt and Joe Tessitore will also be a part of the fun. To get ESPN Plus, download the app or go to ESPNPlus.com. Prime time. Prime time. Well, this prime time right now comes down to huge play here for Prairie View A&M. And big number 98, C.J. Anderson, is back on the field in right for Jackson State. Connolly going to pass. pass and fair. all over the receiver was Elvia, Elvia Payton. Tony Mullins was the guy. He was just draping himself over, and the flag comes out. Only fit we see another penalty <laughs> in overtime. Biggest play of the overtime. Been a very flag riddled game. Defense, number 30, 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. I think you meant to say number 36, but you'll see him. He's on him there and he's grabbing him. <laughs> he was not going to give up. He was not going to give up the touchdown. <laughs> give up a penalty, don't give up the touchdown. Jay, tonight we've seen. 29 yellow flags come out. And so you saw the discussion on the sideline with Coach Hendrick. And Peyton now first and goal from the six. Tucker back on the field. They hand it off to their playmaker. Tucker oh, wow. spin gets to the outside and he's in. <laughs> That boy good. Yeah, I was just gonna say that, Jay. <laughs> I mean, he had a jump cut for the ages. The way he froze the entire defense, then shipped it outside. I mean, watch this. He's looking, Arp! jump cut, get to the outside, make an arm tackle miss. It's a foot race. You, you just can't teach that. You, you either have it or you don't. And fortunately for the Prairie View Panther fans, he got it. We've seen DeWanye Tucker make some serious cuts tonight. And the Panthers up by a touchdown. Now, it's going to lower his yards per carry because yeah. they were on the five-yard line. But look how exciting this five-yard run was. The patience, they have him squared up. No, you don't. Gets to the outside, sizes up. Dwayne Pickett, number seven, makes it a foot race to the corner. I 
Called him the Tariq Corner, the SWAT. And he's been earning that title tonight. Now defensively, what do you do against Jackson State? Well, Jalen Jones is going to come back in as quarterback. You mentioned that he led them on the final drive at the end of regulation. And Jones gives it to Harper, and Harper picks up a few. Trey Shot Smith brought him down. And at some point, if you're a Prairie View, you have to say, we're going to give us give you our best run blitz mm -hmm. right they still they're still keeping two safeties high two safeties high and they run the ball win the battle the line of scrimmage i don't like those two high safeties when a running quarterback's in there give them the threat to make it maybe audible into a pass the carry up ahead picks up some more yardage content to give up the yeah. run just so they won't get beat Good for five. You know, you're hoping they make a mistake that somebody wins a, a matchup assignment, but I, I just, I really don't agree with the, the too high look we're seeing right now. Gotta bring those guys down into the box. Harper once again and pushing forward and just extra effort and will gets them the first down and maybe a couple more yards. So Keyshawn Harper, the junior out of Mobile, Alabama. Keeping it going for the Tigers here in overtime. First down, you want to make them play behind the chains. So crowd the line of scrimmage. Make them, if you come up with an incomplete pass, you're, you're doing your job, you're winning the battle. But they're coming out standard front. Content to run it on first down. And again, I think it begs the question, Jay, of we know Jalen Jones to be more of a runner trying to dare him, bait him in to beating you with his arm. And at the very least, I'm going to give him an exotic look, mm -hmm. and maybe he looks at the sideline and calls an audible, and anytime you can make an offense change the play, the chances of success go down. And they just keep handing it off, and the Tigers getting some good yards out of Keyshawn Harper. So Harper brings up another third and short. And obviously in overtime, a field goal is not going to do. You have to answer with a touchdown if you want to keep this game going. Yeah, they're, they're content saying we're going to run the ball twice to pick up a first down. And then we'll see what adjustments you make. But there's been no adjustments made by Prairie View defensively. And they're just allowing Jackson State to continue to pound the football. Jones in trouble, throws it, it's incomplete. Fourth and two, final play of the game if they can't convert. Well, that was a mistake, and this is the, what you risk when you have Jones throw the football. This ball could have been intercepted. Cheatham was right there. That would have been a game-winning interception. Player down for Prairie View AM. So while the trainers take a look at him, trying to drop something, we're just fourth and a couple. I mean, I would literally have everybody within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Everybody, cornerbacks, everybody. Give them the look, crowd the box. If you can put eight guys around the line of scrimmage, okay. One on one across the board. And you say, if you run the football, we're going to have more people than you can block, period. 
And if you throw the football and beat me with that one and my guy can't make a play with a quarterback that hasn't completed the pass in this game, so be it. We'll go to the next overtime. But this is when you have to sell out. I, I don't like it because I see a guy 10 yards away from the line of scrimmage in the middle of the field. Bring that safety down. Why are you in the goal line? Get in there. Bring him up. Oh, and they bobbled. Bobbled the snap. Still trying to stay on his feet. And Harper trying to make something happen. Gets the throw. And D.D. Bowie somehow finds his way in the end zone. There were guys illegal downfield. They, how do you not call that? That's the first thing I started looking for. Was there anybody illegal downfield? And they did not call it. Maybe I missed it. But way to keep hustling. Bobble snap by Jones. Missed tackle. He gets outside of the pocket. I don't see anybody down the field. <laughs> Salazar. And this is the all-important extra point. Remember, he did miss one earlier tonight. This one to take it to double overtime. It's good. <laughs> wow. And Jay, something out of nothing in that last play. Jalen Jones bobbles the snap, but Keyshawn Harper saves it. Keyshawn Harper might have saved Jackson State season. I mean, just nowhere to go. He realized he's going to get tackled. Bowie was there. I'm open. And not only makes the completion for the first down, but gets into the end zone. The presence of mind from your junior running back to try to extend that play and create something on fourth down. You know, like, like I tell my buddy sometimes when I'm playing golf, I'd rather be lucky than good. <laughs> <laughs> and that was luck. Previous opponents have had success on fourth down. It continued here tonight. I still can't believe nobody was downfield yeah. on the offensive line. Yeah, we've seen that called, what, about three? Three, three times. times a night? Yeah. Good news, Jay, is. We got more to go. It's been fun here <laughs> from Houston. You're just not done with us just yet. Give me your thoughts up until this point and what has to happen in double overtime. Uh, well, I think that <laughs> I, I don't even know. I was trying to get the caller. I, I, I'm speechless. I think that uh, defensively that both defenses have to leave their comfort zone a little bit. I think for Jackson State, they ended up becoming what Prairie View wanted, scared of Dewanye Tucker. We'll go back to that and I mean, for Prairie View, it's simple. Stop the run. Yeah. They're going to run the football with Jalen Jones at quarterback. Kamani Clark now in. They switch it up at the running back position. Trey Shot Smith brought him down. So we saw Keyshawn Harper help keep this game going. Now Kamani Clark. Second and five. Too high safety look again, 24-22. Ten-yard line, that's considered high safety. There's no help to you in the run game there. And that's how they continue to have so much success on the run. And defensive coordinator Henry Miller content to con keep going with that. And, and just surprising. And when they've had success, it's been running behind the left side of their line, which is Jalen Jones and Amari catching. So I look for them to force the football on that side. Clark trying to run behind his tacklers, moving forward. And the first down. fans in Panther Stadium standing to their feet in this double overtime. Jackson State working with first and 10 at the 11 yard line. Jalen Jones, design run for him to the right side and he's brought down by Drake Cheatham. 
That was the old flag football play we used to run. Sweep right. <laughs> Quarterback sweep right. He's a burner. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if Jalen Jones could ever figure it all out in the passing game, he could be that ultimate weapon. You see why he was a five-star recruit coming out of high school. And Clark trying to keep moving those legs and moves up ahead to just about the two third down now. All right, Jay. What should you do? What should, what what should Jackson should, State what, do? What, <laughs> well, they're just going to keep running the football because yeah. everything says run the football. In fact, in overtime, they've run it 10 of their 11 plays on offense. But I mean, if you're if if you're Prairie View A and M, you've come up with some stops where you've needed it. But this is kind of like a bin don't break situation, right? So if I'm them, and I am no defensive coordinator, but now I need to bring some more pressure. To your point, I've been listening to you, James. <laughs> should, should have done a while ago. You know, just the down and distance now really puts you to disadvantage. Third and two from the three-yard line. They can get a first down mm -hmm. and have first and goal from the one. Not looking good for this Panther defense. Harper back in at running back. They sniffed him out, but Jalen Jones getting to the outside and he was pushed out. Whoa. So no gain on that play and another fourth down for Jackson State. Let's see how they get there. They blitz, so they finally brought up the safety blitz and disrupted the pocket. I'm curious about that spot. And check this out, Jay. This time around, they're gonna kick it on fourth and two. They came up with the stop. Hand it over to Adrian Salazar for what should be a chip shot. <laughs> A little bit tougher angle this time from the right hash. Play a game against the offense. Five-yard penalty. It's fourth down. Believe it or not, makes the kick a little bit easier when you back it up a little bit because of the college football game with the wider hash marks. You know, when you're on that far right hash up close, you really have to pull the ball. But if you back it up a little bit, now you can. You don't have to yank it. It's hard to get it through the uprights. The good news for Prairie View a &M fans is they declined it. Yeah, that's <laughs> why they, they realize that. This is a tough angle, that far right has. He has to pull it between the uprights. Snap and hold are good. Puts it up and through the uprights once again. Well, Adrian Salazar has been ice cold in the veins tonight outside of that Miss PAT. But, but what a disappointing field goal yeah. in overtime. Third and two from the three-yard line. And you have to settle for fourth down field goal. I mean, th and this is the play. They finally brought a blitz. And Jalen Jones tries to salvage the play. There was nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> the fans got to get into it a little bit more, too. Reggie Stubbenfield on the ground. Remember, he had just come back from injury as he trots off. Well, Coach Hendricks, you're a defensive coordinator. <laughs> you're going to need your defense to help you force this game into another overtime or to win it. Wow, I'm, I'm thinking back. Fourth and one, and you don't go for it. The way you had success running the football. Just always say it. Defensive coaches, what do they do, Tiff? <laughs> they play it close to the best. Yeah. <laughs> that was an example right there. <laughs> so rather than jeopardize or give his offense an opportunity to get the score, rather put his defense on the field. Caleb Broach in instead of Dewanye Tucker. Trazon finally running to that left side, has good blocking. 
Broach. And Broach was there to help spring Connolly for a few extra yards. I say Broach is really good in pass protection, but watch him serve as a lead blocker. Seal the edge, nothing gets outside you. Nice block to get to Ryan Wansley further down the field and running the football. Just always say it, defensive coaches, what do they do, Tiff? <laughs> They play it close to the best. Yeah. <laughs> that was an example right there. <laughs> so rather than jeopardize or give his offense an opportunity to get the score, rather put his defense on the field. Caleb Broach in instead of Dewanye Tucker. Trazon finally running to that left side, has good blocking. And Broach was there to help spring Connolly for a few extra yards. I say Broach is really good in pass protection, but watch him serve as a lead blocker. Seal the edge, nothing gets outside you. Nice block to get to Ryan Wansley further down the field. And Prairie View A&M's on to something here. We see several players on both sides go down late in this ball game. This has been a physical battle, as we've mentioned, Jay. Hey, is that Keontae Hampton? Who, remember last week in the game versus Mississippi Valley, he missed the last couple plays of overtime, but it's not Hampton. It's Tyler, Tyler Casby. Remember, Jalen Morton's already been knocked out of this ball game. Panthers starting quarterback. Called the Wanya Tucker, Mr. Primetime. He's in the backfield. The handoff to Tucker, and he stopped just after he got started. Justin Reagan was there. And that, that's one there with that look there, man to man coverage. So they're sending the guy in motion, so you see the coverage, it's man to man. And man-to-man -man coverage, they don't account for the quarterback in the running game. I think he would have been better off if you get that same look, pulling it yourself. Connolly may have an opportunity to go untouched into the end zone if they get the same look. Connolly trying to move to his left side. And Keontae Hampton says, uh-uh. And that's the play they had success on early, but the difference was you had Caleb Broach in the backfield compared to your five foot, 560-pound running back, not able to get the block, missed it. Quarterback takes a hit. So now third down, 11 to go. Protect the football. Connolly changes direction, finds the middle of the field just near the 10 yard line. And I would suspect we'd see field goal. the field goal unit tried on to try to tie this ball game up again. Amari Martinez trots on, the fifth-year senior out of Houston, Texas. Coach says he's got a strong leg. Comfy with him from this range. It's a 27-yard attempt. And Jackson State spins the timeout. <laughs> Well, Don't you love this game of chess going back and forth? We saw a couple of timeouts at the end of regulation to try to ice the kicker for Jackson State. Didn't work. We'll see how it plays out here for Prairie View's kicker. But when Salazar had that opportunity, he, he kept walking through the steps, just kicking and kicking, going through the the motion looked like Martinez was thinking about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that's what the other team wants you to do, to think about what you have to do to overthink and go for the miss. So let's see if the strategy paid off.
Good hold. Kick is up and it's blocked. That does it. That ends the ball game. C.J. Anderson was there. Back-to-back -back wins for Jackson State. The Tigers catching fire at the right time. Overtime games, close games, you never really wanted to come down to special teams units on the field. Look at the surge. They really wanted that ball. And that was C.J. Anderson who got to it. And the Tigers loving it. Back to back road wins for John Hendrick. This time in double overtime. And good exchange there between the kickers, Adrian Salazar and Amari Martinez, but it was Salazar who was money. Four field goals tonight. This was another good one. And Jackson State still alive. <laughs> they live to fight another day. Coach John Hendricks' team comes on the road for the second consecutive week, walks away with two overtime conference victories. That's big. For Jay Walker, I'm Tiffany Green saying so long from the hill. We'll send you out to volleyball action on the West Coast.